So we are jumping right back into things. We had a couple technical issues. So let's warm up to the case. This game, I'm not gonna lie, was the game that made me take a break from Phoenix Wright. I told myself at the beginning, if I can get through Terranigma, thank you, Zigglebot, I can get through the final case of Ace Attorney. Arguably, I think the previous case we did was a little worse, but I think the things that we have to do in this case frustrated me very much as a player. So I'm very curious what the chat will think as we go through this particular storyline of this particular case. So I did not ever play this case to completion, so this will be interesting. So we're finally going into blind territory. I played maybe the first trial segment and that's about it. So there's a couple achievements that I have noted in my notes uh, that involve getting uh, bad endings or asking specific questions to certain witnesses. So we'll be doing those to get the achievements. But uh, wish me luck, chat, as we go into episode four, Farewell My Turnabout, part one investigation. Now, the moment you've all been waiting for. Who will be this year's Grand Prix champion? Who will be our hero of heroes? Will it be last year's runner-up, Jam and Ninja? Maybe the Captain Saipan, all the way from the lovely tropical island of Saipan. He defends a certain starry score, raring to win. And Global Hero Ani Kopan doesn't want to go home without the prize. We hope Lady Luck is with all our heroes tonight. Yeah, that line before tripped me up. And now, the winner of the third annual Hero of Heroes, Grand Prix, is me. By the way, in Parameter, you might notice a certain addition of emotes for the channel. Whoa, the true hero of the night has appeared in our midst. So hopefully you enjoy them. Hero of Heroes, superhero, it says on the fan. Looks like this year's Grand Prix goes to this fantastic warrior, the Nickel Samurai. Too bad, Jamba Ninja. Looks like the title eluded you again this year. March 20th, 7.42 p.m., Gatewater Hotel, Viol Hall. All right, yes. Did you hear that, Nick? Did you? The Nickel Samurai, he did it. Yeah, he sure did. Ugh, I'm getting too old for this. Ah, oh, I'm proud of the guy for doing the series justice. Um, so the person everyone was cheering for, I was trying to think of Will Power's voice. I remember he was very timid, even though he had the kind of lion hair going on from the first game. So hopefully I did his voice the same way. It's been quite a while since we played that. Guess he got the prize? Yup. You know who we're talking about, right, Pearly? The Nickel Samurai. No, every Sunday I only watch the educational channel's Kids Masterpiece Theater. Okay, that's it. From now on, it's the Nickel Samurai. All the kids watch it. Do you like the Nickel Samurai too, Mr. Nick? Nah, Nick's an old fart, so he's not allowed to watch it anymore. That's right. But I do like Kids Masterpiece Theater. Hey, I didn't know you were so young at heart, Nick. Mr. Nick, you're a grown-up. You're not allowed to watch it anymore. It's supposed to act your own age and have interests that match. It's very important. Aw, give it a rest, Pearly. Looks like I made the right choice in inviting everyone here. I'm glad you're all having a good time. Ah, uh, it's like a dream. So I guess this is a follow-up from the first game involving Will Powers, AK Powers we just saw there, being accused of murder. We represented him in the first game. So I guess now he's gone on to be a samurai. Too bad for Gem and Ninja, though. Last year, he lost to the Pink Princess, warrior of little old Tokyo. I thought this might be his year. Yeah. Oh, hey, did anyone else think the Gemma Ninja looked a bit different today? Different? What do you mean? Um, well, he wasn't carrying his bright red guitar. Hey, you're right. Strange he'd walk around without his signature guitar. Ugh. I will never understand these people in their shows. Anyway, Mr. Powers, thank you for- thank you very much for tonight. Oh, it, it was nothing. I owe you one, so it's just my way of saying thanks. Hey, Nick, come on! It's time to get going to the lobby. 
There's a post-ceremony stage that's supposed to start real soon. And then, I heard there's a going to be a press conference after that. A press conference? Is he going to make a speech about winning this year's prize? Uh, well, not exactly. Something about the Nickel Samurai confessing something. Dun dun dun. Confessing? Sounds pretty serious. Aw, oh, Nick, come on! You don't want to be the last ones there, do you? Yeah, Mr. Nick, do you? Why me? The show doesn't even start for another 20 minutes. I mean, I guess I'll talk to him since we're here. Actually, before we do that, present the badge. Ah, oh, I really owe you one. If it wasn't for you guys, I don't know what would have happened. What you did, it was a real tight spot I was in. You fought so hard to get me out. I don't care what happens. I'll never forget everything you've done for me. Let's talk about willpowers to willpowers. Thank you very much for inviting us today. Oh, it was nothing, really. Guys like us don't get to come to a place like this often. So I thought I'd invite you all. Hey, Mr. Powers. What have you been up to lately? Well, since the Pink Princess successfully wrapped up last month, I went on a kid's exercise show. Well, wearing a rabbit mask over my face. Oh, I see. I'm still really sorry about all the headache I caused you that time, Mr. Wright. Ah, uh, well, what's done is done. So, let's forget about it. This is Will Powers. He's an action star. His popularity exploded when he was the Steel Samurai. And he was the first case Maya worked on with me. It's too bad you look scary. Your people know you're a real softie who's good with kids. Um, thanks. Let's ask about the Nickel Samurai. I can't believe they're going to make a movie based on the Nickel Samurai. I can't believe it either. But for a different reason. The Steel Samurai. Epic story of one hero in a desperate fight against his arch nemesis, the evil magistrate, in the city of Neo Old Tokyo. And last year they started a new series, The Nickel Samurai. The new series seems to be a hit with the kids too. I'm really attached to the Steel Samurai as a show, so I was hoping that maybe I'd get the chance to do something in this new one. Yeah, it's too bad. It'd been awesome to see you with the new actor, Matt Ungard. I was gonna say, Ungard sounds like a fencing term. He's super popular right now. Mr. Ungard? Looks like Pearls doesn't know who he is. This year, it's gonna be the Nickel Samurai vs. the Jammin' Ninja at the box office. Jammin' Ninja? Who's that again? So who is this Jammin' Ninja again? He's a hero, duh. His hero is the, oh, his symbol is the bright red guitar he's always carrying. Ninja who's always carrying a bright red guitar? How does that even work? Thinks Nick. The scarf around his neck and a guitar in his hand. He raises, he, oh, excuse me. He rises to stardom in an ancient time. A ninja who becomes a star. Yeah, Ninja becomes a star. There's a strong rivalry between the two of them. Global Studios Nickel Samurai and Worldwide Studios Jam and Ninja. Even air at the same time. You know what I heard? Heard those two don't get along at all. Nickel Samurai is on guard and the guy who plays the damn Jam and Ninja, I mean. Nickel Samurai speaks French? Oh, you mean Matt on guard, the actor. It's even in the world of heroes. Oh, excuse me. I guess even the world of heroes isn't a sparkling happy place. I yeah. Okay. 
So I'm assuming there's nothing else I could do here. So let's move. We'll go to the hallway. March 20th, Gatewater Hotel, hallway. Like the bear with the flowers. I might go investigate that in the moment. Wow, what is this place? Looks like I've stumbled into Oz or something. Way in the back, there's a sign for the bathroom. Maybe I should visit it while, while I can before the show starts. I understand flowers in front of the dressing room, but what are the stuffed bears doing here? Could be there's an action star with a soft spot for teddy bears? Nah, can't be. Compared to the flowers on the other side of the hall, these are much more gorgeous. Let's see. Record companies, fan clubs, company workers, family. Bringing all these flowers home would be hard, I think. There's a piece of paper taped to the door that says Juan Corita's room. Juan Corita. Name just sounds like a star's name. I've heard it before, but I don't know anything about him at all. To Mr. On Guard from the Global Studio staff. Ah, oh, be nice if lawyers got flowers too. Something like, to Mr. Wright from all your grateful clients. There's a piece of paper taped to the door that says Man On Guard's room. Man On Guard. Heard that name before. Phoenix, it was like two minutes ago. Welcome, Kirk. Hopefully you enjoy the new emotes. Oh yeah, Maya's always yammering about him like the obsessed fan she is. There are toilets in each room in this hotel. But since all sorts of events are held here, there are bathrooms for people who are staying here to use as well. Perfect for people like me, who can't afford to stay here in the first place. Okay. So I can now go to the hall if I want to. Sounds like the post-ceremony show is about to start. All right, I'm so pumped. I wonder if he's going to show off his special move today. Nickel Samurai Smelting. Actually, what I'm interested in most is the press conference. Oh, Kirk found the objection. There should be one more. You mean the big confession the Nickel Samurai is going to make after the show? So what is it? Don't you know what it's about, Mr. Powers? Oh, well, I'm not the Steel Samurai anymore, so I don't have any idea. Yeah, there should be a hold it. Yeah, there we go. Look at it dramatically appear. Uh, sorry. Ah, oh, so I guess you're going to the press conference then. Yeah, of course. If that's the case, then here. Take these tickets so you could get in. Press conference ticket. Added to the court record. Seems like the Nickel Samurai is to confess something after the post-ceremony stage show. Thank you very much. Well, let's get going to the lobby. It looks like it's over this way, Nick. Oh, excuse me, Mr. Nick. Okay, for great justice. I'll examine the room briefly, just for more flavor. This sure is one luxurious hotel. What's to the point of gaudy? Now it blends together everything fancy imaginable. Speaking of fancy, didn't that bellboy give me something like that last year? What can I say? This is a really high class hotel. I've never eaten this kind of salad before. Poor Pearls. Haven't eaten only vegetables all her life. She's been missing out. Don't worry, any leftovers belong in my happily awaiting stomach anyway. You're such a glutton, Maya. Ugh. Oh. I lose this one to Maya. You sure can eat. Well, a growing girl needs her nutrients. A growing girl? Exactly how big do you plan on getting? Let's go look at this. This is a dream. I don't ever want to wake up. All the directors and stars that were here to see the heroes. Wow. I had no idea who most of them were. Neither did I. Nick, you've got to cut that news-only habit out. Your new show is going to be The Nickel Samurai, every Sunday morning at 8. Oh, I know. We can watch it together starting next week. I'll come wake you up extra early to make sure, okay? Uh, I'm fine. You know, you really don't have to on my account. The award ceremony was just held on that stage. 
It was really fabulous. He just reminded me of the circus for a moment. Well, shows like that are guaranteed to be good, you know. Please don't remind me of the circus. The chandelier is really something, isn't it? I thought it was kind of a spaceship. W what? Hey, Nick. How about we get one of these for the office? A are we not going to comment on that? Okay. <laughs> one of those hanging from our poor weak ceiling? I don't think so. Oh, there's one more thing we could examine. There's a grand set of doors over there. Behind these doors is an equally grand lobby. Shall we go and take a look, Mr. Nick? Hey, wake it up. This grand dessert is calling to me. It's saying, eat me now. Okay, let's try moving to the hotel lobby. March 20th, Gatewater Hotel, hotel lobby. So I guess we're in the same hotel from the first game. They did say it upgraded to a five star, I believe, earlier in the game. Hmm, only a really gaudy hotel would have such a large gaudy lobby to match. Ah, I think they're gonna have the post ceremony show over there. You're using a compact stage. I see. She goes, oh, I'm all ready to use my special samurai power. Maya looks like she's ready to start a fight. PA notice says, your attention, please. Your attention, please. The Nickel Samurai's post-ceremony stage show will not be held tonight due to unforeseen circumstances. Didn't know Leo from Guilty Gear was in this. Yeah, pretty much. What? Why? Ow. You didn't have to pinch me. Hit yourself if you don't believe it. We are asking for everyone's cooperation at this time. So please stay where you are. This is a special request from the police. Uh-oh, chat. Not the police. Dot, 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 exclamation mark. Gasp. Police? D did they just say the police? Do you want me to go and check out what's going on? Um, wait. Uh, I'll come with you. Freeze! You two, didn't you hear the announcement just now? Oh my gosh. Please don't be that one annoying cop with the microphone. I beg of you. Please don't be that cop. You can be Gumshoe. Don't be that cop from the first game. With bated breath, chat, I will press the confirm button. If I see a stupid microphone in his hand, I'm going to be very upset. I just want you to know. I just finished telling you not to move. That voice. I've heard that voice somewhere before. My dread levels are rising, chat. I really did not like this character from the first game. Oh, wait, that's not who I think. Oh, you know what? I know who it is. Hold on, chat. I remember a long time ago. I don't know why she's communicating on behalf of the police. I believe this is supposed to be Old Bag. I believe it's supposed to be Old Bag. I vaguely recall she shows up at some point in this case. So let, let's switch over our voice to accommodate. I, w I was thinking it was the police saying these things, but now when I read this statement, I think this confirms it. Honestly, you these days can't be bothered to listen to other people when they talk. Just the other day was the same thing. There was a small footprint with next to it that said, Beware, bridge out. And along came the was puck up to the bridge. Tried to tell the boy he was dangerous out, but he would but would he listen? No, of course not. So he'd be on and careful. Bridge was out was the part was dangerous. Like pinning you now, the kid said that he really meant it. Well, I really didn't have it. Knocked him clear off the bridge. Honestly, kids these days don't know right from wrong, I tell you. This non-stop chatter. It, it can't be. Miss Oldbag? Dot dot dot. What is it, you young whippersnappers? Do I know you? Wait, you. Your powers, aren't you? I vaguely recall. I yeah. Um. About what happened back then. You didn't even get nominated this year, did you? That's right. You're doing that children's exercise program. Trying to play nice. Oh, yeah. That's me. Thankfully, I still have a job. I love that show. You're a hoot. You're the big brother character, right? I see one of your covered mask. I know you're the giant rabbit. What a workout art. But you know what it is? I mean, you, you wear the mask. How many TVs do you think... 
Okay. I, I can't keep up with the dialogue. <laughs> While doing the voice, that is too hard. That is too hard to read. It's already meant to be hard to read, but vocalizing it makes it too hard to read. Curiosity. Am I allowed to see? I don't think this is a game that lets me check it. No, I don't think I could check it. Some of the games allow you to see the uh, history in the dialogue. I was going to go back and actually read it, but I don't see that option when I press this. Court record is just this thing for clarity. She hasn't been added to the list yet. I guess we'll go over the profiles we have now since we're here. Maya Fay, age 18, my assistant discipline in the Korean tradition of spirit channeling. Pearl Fay, age 8, Maya's cousin, a channeling prodigy with immense spiritual power. And finally, we have Will Powers, allegedly 24. Was this deal samurai? His face is a bit intimidating, so he's got a hard look in showbiz. Um, what are you doing here? Look at my uniform, and tell me you can't tell I'm a member of security. But that outfit... Annoying, noisy brats get the blaster. Rata ta 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 ta. I can already, I can already feel my patience level, chat. We're gonna be seeing this quite a lot. I have a feeling. <laughs> I don't want to talk to her, but we're going to talk to her. Miss Oldbag, what are you doing here? What happened to your position at Global Studios? That old place. Well, since that incident, they've been letting people go. When they cut the security team, I got the pink slip. What incident? What did you do? I didn't do anything, you youngin. Don't you remember that incident a year ago when this lady got on the witness stand and testified? Yeah. And you, weren't you the one who was bullying me? This fragile girl at heart. Um, I plead the fifth. But you know, I think maybe I rubbed the wrong... Oh, excuse me. I think maybe I rubbed the upper management the wrong way by testifying. Yes, that has to be it. Everything is all your fault. Me? Not about being a bodyguard at first. After being handed old Pinky. You? A bodyguard? For your friend. That fiery, good-looking guy with the red jacket and the ruffles. M Mr. Edgeworth? But... That sort of arrangement would be entirely too troublesome for me. That's what he said to me. What did I ever do to deserve that? rat a tat tat chat. I'm not gonna lie, chat. We're, we're gonna take this moment to say... I would like to definitively state... I don't think I'd like a single joke character in Phoenix Wright. <laughs> like, when they're doing their actual comedy bit, I really don't like them. <laughs> Can I just go on record and say this now before we get further in the case? The previous case was very trying for different reasons, but yeah. This is not a very endearing comedic gimmick for me, for sure. We're gonna ask her what happened, which again feels like a mistake. Um... So, did something happen? I don't have all the details, but it looks like another one of those incidents happened again. A an incident? Like a murder kind of incident? Maybe. You see, I'm a bit of a devilish woman. So wherever I go, showers of blood are sure to follow. Bet you didn't know that. Um, and shouldn't you quit being a security guard? At least for the other people's sake? Silence, whippersnapper. Like, I have a genuine question. Is this supposed to be funny to other people where she keeps shooting the, the ray gun mid-conversation? Like, she's already a comedic character. Did she really need to have, like, another gimmick other than the fact that she's a comedic character who likes to speak really quickly so her text is basically unreadable? Like, did they need to give her another one? The writing has me with big question marks, chat. I'm just letting you know. Hey, Nick. What is it? I don't like that devilish smile playing on your lips. 
Let's make like we're going to the bathroom and check things out. No, no way. The police told us not to go anywhere, remember? Huh? How boring. You're such a boring guy. Got no motivation, no spirit. Huh? What? What's going on? Are you giving Mystic Maya trouble again, Mr. Nick? Not you too, Pearls. Please don't stick your little nose into this one. So listen to this, Pearly. This one time at lawyer camp, Nick. Okay, I get it. Well, let's go take a look. Yay! I knew you couldn't say no to me, Mi I almost said Mr. Nick. I knew you couldn't say no to me, Nick. That's right. You walk over miles of hot coals from Mystic Maya. Winning you, Mr. Nick. <laughs> I'm just like internally chat. I just feel myself going. Ugh. This is going to be a long case. <laughs> chat, I'm already annoyed. We're not even at the trial, which is what broke me the first time. Oh boy, let's take a deep breath. Let's recenter ourselves. We have a lot of this to get through. So Phoenix thinks to himself, that would be every time we work a case together. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go already. Come along too, Pearly. Goody, I get to come. I get to come. It's a stage for the post-ceremony stage show. It was supposed to be a press meeting after the show, but now... Looks like no one will hear what the Nickel Samurai had to confess. They say these cameras were set up to cover the post-ceremony stage show. But I wonder where everyone's gone. I bet any their cameras like this. Guess something big must have happened. We're here, so we might as well take some pictures, okay? Everyone sit in a chair! But we're all out of film. Don't worry about it. There's a zillion cameras over there we could borrow. Hey, hey, can't just go and borrow an expensive professional camera like that. Wow, looks like there's a fancy restaurant on the second floor. You still feel like eating? I mean, since we're here, you know. Don't pull this since we're here trick on me. What a beautiful mansion. Do you live in this wonderful world every day, Mr. Nick? Oh. No. Uh, this is my first time in a place like this. Wait, no it's not. Wait, no. No. No, that's not true. Chat objection. He was at this hotel before. Canonically. <laughs> Chat objection. <laughs> See the prior case involving the bellboy that was literally mentioned earlier. What a liar. What a fibber, chat. What a lying liar who lies. Let's present our little badge, though. These eyes of mine are real pros now. Pros? Pros are doing what? The police work, of course. My eyes are like a hawk. Professional eyes spot a messy incident. A messy, bloody incident. That's why I don't have time for you meddling kids and your petty little things. Let's go back to the hall. March 20th, Gatewater Hotel, Viola Hall. They're really out of the ordinary here. Are you looking for the incident that the old lady was talking about? Doesn't look like it happened here. Well, we better go look somewhere else. All right, then let's try. Excuse me. Speaking of the bellboy. Ah. Oh. That's not the same bellboy. Ooh, that's a creepy looking face. Like, okay, chat, real talk. If you have not played this game before and you saw this character, would you not automatically assume he's the villain? <laughs> he has like a zip from chin to head. He's got kind of like the, what's it called? Blackjack look, I think is the name of the character, except with the stitch goes all the way up the head. Blackjack being a doctor that was famously stitched together multiple pieces of his face. It's giving me Blackjack vibes. Parameter says totally not suspicious. I was just like, whoa. 
And he's got a monocle. I mean, come on. He might as well just go, um, yes. <laughs> like just <laughs> one million dollars or something. I mean, he's pretty much there. Are you by chance Miss Maya Fay? Um, yeah, that's me. You have a phone call waiting for you at the front desk. A call? I wonder if it's someone from Korean Village. What's wrong, Mystic Maya? Oh, nothing. You guys go ahead and I'll be right there, okay? Okay. Right this way, Miss Faye. Let's go look somewhere else now, Mr. Nick. Yeah, okay. It's a little exciting and a little scary. I can't believe we just let her walk away, by the way. It's kind of messed up. There's a grand set of doors over there. The doors Maya followed the bellboy out of. <laughs> Chat, and then Maya was never seen again. The end. Let's go to the hallway. March 20th, Gatewater Hotel. Hallway. I told you. I get people the info they want, which means they've got a right to know. Nope, don't care who you are, pal. At least this one I can identify as Gumshoe. I'm not sure about the other person. I hope the other person is not Lot of Heart. I really hope it's not Lot of Heart. Chat, I can only take so many joke characters in one story. Please don't let it be Lot of Heart. I beg of you. <laughs> Just like, my fingers are like, please, they're crossed. I'm like, please do not make me voice Lot of Heart and Old Bag in the same game again. <laughs> please don't. Nope, don't care who you are, pal. We're still investigating, so you can't go in. Oh, no. They said you're, but like Y-E-R for your problem. Well, chat, I don't think I got my wish. <laughs> I'm just going to state from that one line of dialogue, my heart sunk. <laughs> Hope gone. What's your problem? Just you wait. I'll be all over the morning paper. Scruffy detective secret scandal revealed. You'll see. I'll get you back. Those two sound pretty serious. That southern accent can only mean... Hey, right. Hey, Lada. <laughs> Come on, do a gal a favor and tell this cop I'm just doing my job and I've got rights. Aw, oh, you! Ah, oh, Detective Gumshoe. Hey, pal, help a guy out. Tell her that only the police are allowed here. This is scene of a murder, so she should leave this to us pros. Uh, a murder? Oh shoot, me and my big mouth. See, I knew it. My gut instinct told me so. I always trust my gut. A murder, it said. And that's what it is. Genuine murder. Hey, wait. Yeehaw, a murder. Of a big star, no less. Oh man, I'm in trouble now. I'll talk to him, but my heart is already sinking many steps, chat. So, Detective Gumshoe. A murder? Oh, no, that's not it. I got my facts mixed up for a second there, pal. Um, Mr. Nick? Is the dead person the Nickel Samurai? Huh? Why do you ask? Well, Miss Maya was rooting for him, so... It wasn't the Nickel Samurai that got bumped. Actually, the Nickel Samurai is the one under suspicion of doing the bumping off. So, I would guess by this line of dialogue, the Jammin Ninja has died, allegedly. What? The guy that died was the hero named the Jammin Ninja, pal. Look at that, chat. Context clues. I don't remember this case, but... We picked it up on context clues. The Jammin Ninja. Let's ask about a lot of hard. Um, that woman with the big puffy hair that looks like cotton candy. You mean Lada? That woman. She was there that time too, right? That time? When Mystic Maya did that channeling. Oh, that time. Well, Lada's a journalist, so that's why she was there. Journalist. Looks like she was hanging around here before the murder happened. 
hanging around. <laughs> yeah, I was like, remember how he's like, darn, I let the details slip, and then he's just straight up telling us all the answers. Thank you, Kirk, for calling him out on that. It's amazing he's still hired at this point. Yeah, hiding and wait in front of the Gemma Ninja's door, pal. But, but why would she? She wouldn't tell me, pal. She just said something about getting my big scoop. Scoop? I don't know she, what sort of news could she be after? Go to the victim. So the victim was the Gemma Ninja? Mr. Gemma Ninja? He was on a really popular rival TV show to the Nickel Samurai. Oh. The victim was the action star Juan Corita. He got a huge push and rode the express train to stardom. I mean, even I know who he is. Yeah, even I recognize his face. But I heard that man on guard's been taking the wind out of his sail. I'm telling you, pal, as far as who's popular, those two are hogging all the limelight. I guess there's no space for Mr. Powers at all, huh? Poor guy. Mr. On Guard, um, that's the Nickel Samurai, right? Yep, I mean, no, you've got to say it with more oomph. The Nickel Samurai. A anyway, so now that Juan Corita has gone, oof. That means Mr. On Guard has the whole state to himself, wouldn't you say? I wouldn't bet on it, pal. We couldn't have that happen, you know. Or what kind of news instead of what kind of news? That's fair, that's fair. Can't have that happen. What's that supposed to mean, I wonder? Alright, well, let's move. Oh. Wait, there's nothing to do here? How is that possible? Hmm. Oh, hold on. Let, let's present some stuff to him. First of all, the attorney's badge. Did you take a look at this for me? Listen, pal, I'm not leaking any info about the evidence to you this time, except for where I confirmed who died and who this potential suspect is. If I do, my salary's really gonna get cut. Then I wouldn't even be able to get those instant noodles down at the discount market. Um, I'm assuming I have to present one of these two. I'm gonna start with Juan Corita. I'm not a real fan of action shows or anything, but I know who Juan Corita and Matt on guard are. Can't talk about one without talking about the other, I guess. Even debuted around the same time. They have this real fiery rivalry with each other. Kinda like you and me, pal. Never knew he thought of me as a rival. The Nickel Samurai, he really took the Grand Prix tonight. Maya's a big fan of his. Really? Oh, I'm sorry then. Why are you sorry? Man on guard was just arrested, pal. On suspicion of murdering Juan Corita. What? Okay, there we go. New dialogue topic. W why was Mr. On guard arrested? Sorry, pal, but that's not something I can tell you. Just started the investigation, so we don't want any leaks. Looks like yet another steel hammer. Excuse me. Looks like yet another steel samurai hero is in hot water. Um, Mr. Nick? Mystic Maya knew about this. Yeah, I know. She'd make me take this case. I know. Alright, so that's something updated in the hotel lobby. Hey. So what's going on, Mr. Wright? Looks like Juan Corita has been killed. What? Juan is... He's... Looks like he was murdered. The suspect was arrested. The suspect is Mr. Matt on guard. You're joking, right? Nope. 
They arrested the Nickel Samurai and suspicion of murder in the gym and ninja. Ugh. Not again. I feel sick. Again? About a year ago, something just like this happened, Pearls. I still can't believe. No way. No way Matt would. What's Mr. Powers got in his hand? Oh, before I forget, this. This is for you, Mr. Wright. I got this from the bellboy that came by earlier. Why did he hand us a radio transceiver? Oh, and it even called it a radio transceiver instead of a walkie-talkie. Look at that, chat. Originally from the bellboy, it can transmit and receive signals over great distances. For me? But why? I don't know. All he said was for Mr. Phoenix Wright, the attorney. Let's ask about Matt and Juan. Matt is the most energetic and active actor out there right now. Nickel Samurai really sealed this place as a pop idol, but... Kept adding fuel to the fire of his rivalry with Juan anyway. Mr. Juan? He's the Jammin' Ninja, right? Those two with butt heads over everything they could think of. But I'd say Matt was the one who almost always came out on top. And some people only know how to relate to others by butting heads like a ram. Juan said that he'd take Matt out on this time too, so he joined a rival TV show. And that was the Jammin' Ninja. The stylish Nickel Samurai, the Burnin' Jammin' Ninja. Well, things turn messy real fast with those two using their shows for their war. In the final tally, look around. It's pretty obvious how things ended up. Matt even won the Grand Prix this year. The final win over his rival, I guess. Press conference. Mr. Ungarb was going to hold a press conference, wasn't he? That's what I heard. So if you wanted to get to the technical about it, it was the Nickel Samurais Conference. The Nickel Samurais? Yeah. He's supposed to wear his costume and give the press conference that way. He was going to be in costume, but why? I'm not sure. They don't keep me in the loop anymore. Um, I was just wondering, where's Mystic Maya? She's been gone a long time. Now that she mentions it, Maya was only going to answer a phone call. Maybe she got lost. Take a quick look around for her. Beep, 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 chat. Ah! What is it, Mr. Nick? Huh? I I'm not sure. It's coming from this transceiver. Beep. Y yes, hello? Right here. Is this Mr. Phoenix Wright, the attorney? And you are? You don't need to know who I am. I think you have other things to be concerning yourself with. Such as... Help! Nick! Well, Chad, we let her walk into the most obvious kidnapping of all time. <laughs> right, chat? Super obvious kidnapping. Mystic Maya! Maya? So, Mr. Wright, when did you agree that the more important issue is the fate of the girl? Her fate? Does he mean what I think he means? Maya, where are you? Are you hurt? Come now. Don't fall apart on me yet. This... This... No! This... This can't be! Now that I have your attention, Mr. Attorney, I have a modest proposal for you. If you do what I require, then I'll return to you your valuable item unharmed. That is a lot of flashes in the middle of the dialogue. What is this called again in your fancy lawyer terms? Kidnapping for ransom. Yes, that's it. <laughs> a modest proposal, why are we eating babies? 
Kirk there with the reference to Swift's modest proposal, which is a satire. A very dark but very funny piece, I will say. Look at that chat. I remembered basic schooling. This is a kidnapping. Ah! Mystic Maya! Mystic Maya! My sight. Everything's fading away. Maya! Maya! Maya's been kidnapped! Are you there? Mr. Attorney, are you there? How much? How much do you want? Very good, Mr. Attorney. I'm glad you have such a grasp of the situation. Hurry up and state your condition, and then return Maya. Money is not what I seek. What? What I want is a certain verdict. I would like a complete acquittal. Complete acquittal? Oh, what in the world have you done to need? I am not the person you will be representing. What? You are currently at the Gatewater Hotel, are you not? And I know that a murder has just taken place there. Juan Carita was killed, and the suspect is man on guard. You are, as expected, quite on top of things, Mr. Attorney. Now then, what I want is very simple. I want you to obtain a complete acquittal for Matt on guard. Uh, Matt on guard? But, but, but why? He did not kill anyone. I can attest to that. However... However? However what? However, someone is framing him for the murder. Very... Smart someone who is setting him up to take the fall. I agree and do what he wants. Can I believe he'll keep his end of the bargain? You are, of course, at liberty to take me at my word or not. However, there's one thing you could take as fact. Right now, your very precious item is with me in my possession. Uh, help! Uh, Nick! Maya! You have two days. Of course, tonight he will be in questioning with the police. But the trial is in two days. At that trial, you will win a not guilty verdict. Remember, you only have one chance. One chance, Mr. Attorney. One? You expect me to get a not guilty in one trial day? Yes, exactly. I don't believe I was wrong in choosing you, so don't let me down. Ah! Uh. Oh, yes, that's right. Now that I'm playing the role of the kidnapper, I can't pass up this chance to say, and don't even think about calling the cops. Hmm, not great, but you get the idea. Damn it! Uh, who... Who the hell are you? Very well. I'll tell you that much. My name is... The Killer. Wow, what a last name, chat. Round of applause. The kidnapping person who arguably kills people is called The Killer. Round of applause, chat. They thought real hard on that name. Give them a round of applause. It was, it was earned. Beep. 10 out of 10 name chat. I would dot 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 that too, Phoenix. Mr. Nick, where's Miss Maya? She's been kidnapped. No, it's all my fault. I would say it's not Pearl's fault, but I feel like blaming Pearl. Let's blame Pearl. Only I'd gone with Miss Maya. It's not your fault, Pearls. But it is, it is. Miss Maya, where? Mr. Wright, I think we... I think we should tell the police what's going on. No, we can't do that. If we do, who knows what will happen to Maya? Mr. Nick, what about the detective we saw earlier? Detective Gumshoe. His parents were future seers? Yeah, pretty much. Yes, that's it. Wait here and I'll be right back. All right, I'll take care of Pearl while you're away. 
What? Ransom? Shh, not so loud. Ransom is complete acquittal for Madame Guard. Wait, the deal is complete acquittal in exchange for Maya, you mean? This means Mountain Guard is obviously the killer, pal. No doubt about it. The guy said M Mr. On Guard is innocent. You really believe what a kidnapper tells you, pal? I guess he has a point. If On Guard really is innocent, then why the kidnapping? On top of everything else, there's all the evidence we keep finding. Huh? The forensics team's having a field day back there. Um... But it's strange. There's so much evidence that it feels like something's wrong. <laughs> yeah, you're telling me Gumshoe's actually able to find evidence? <laughs> That's impossible. <laughs> right, Chad? I don't think a single one of his cases have gone correctly so far canonically in the game. There's too much evidence. Is that even possible? Actually, didn't the kidnapper say something about on guard being set up? Yeah, I know. I'm just as surprised as you, as you are, Kirk, that he's finding out about the setup. Anyway, looks like you won't be leaving here tonight, pal. Just sit tight and cooperate with the investigation. Tomorrow you can start yours. All right. Isn't there another way? It's probably a doppelganger or a scumshoe. He's actually, yeah, he, he got replaced. He's actually a snatcher. We've got to be careful about pushing the kidnapper the wrong way. You're right. So, as Chad has figured out the gimmick that I really did not like in the case. Date unknown, time unknown, location unknown. We have to prove somebody innocent due to somebody, somebody being kidnapped. And instead of having Maya by her side, I vaguely recall that we had Pearl at our side. And Chad already knows how I feel about Pearl. I do not like this character at all <laughs> was like between like all the people we've had beside us she's dead last on the list boy oh boy did i wish we had the female detective that was working under gumshoe i would very much rather take her over the other options uh, ow my head where, where am i i wonder if i'm still in that hotel what happened to me? Nick. Hurley. Come on, you guys. This isn't funny anymore. The click chat. I see you have awoken. Ah! Wh who are you? Me. I'm known as... Tequila. Tequila? You mean like an assassin? I I'm, I'm too young to die. Don't worry. You are not my target. For now, anyway. Ah! Nick, Nick, where are you? Help me. <laughs> I was gonna say, Chad, if I had control over Phoenix's dialogue, he'd be like, I have Maya. You must prove the innocent of this man. And I'd be like, you can keep Maya. Click. <laughs> that would be me, chat. I would just throw it away. <laughs> be like, call my bluff. <laughs> right, chat? Call my bluff. I dare you. But anyway, that's just me, probably. Yes, that's right. Only one person can save you now. And that is Mr. Phoenix Wright. <laughs> Jeez, that's Savage not wrong, but Savage says Dango. Pretty much. I'm not a fan of Maya. She's not my least favorite character. But she's probably, like, bottom seven. Mostly the pure joke characters are below her. That That's about it. Huh? What? Nick? Nick's going to save me? Calm down and be a good girl. Think of this as a business transaction. Dango says, also this case, I hated this case the most in the series. We mentioned it before. This is the case that got me to stop playing the game and I quit the series for like... Seven years? It was a long time, Chad. I took a very long break in between games. I want to be very clear. Uh, a business transaction? I'm going to contact him now. Hope you'll cooperate and play your assigned role well. Nick, 
What's going to happen to me? Nick, Pearly, Sis. Is this Mr. Phoenix Wright, the attorney? You don't need to know who I am. I think you have other things to, to be concerning yourselves. Such as dot dot dot, alluding to the conversation we had earlier. March 21st, 8 11 a.m., Wright and Company Law Offices. Excuse me, chat. Good morning. Ah, morning, Pearls. Mr. Mit, Mr. Nick, Mr. Nick, come on. Let's hurry and go see Mr. On Guard. You have to wait a bit, Pearls. Visiting hours don't start until 9 a.m., so. Oh, I see. Ah, uh, Mystic Maya, if only. If only I had gone with you. Poor Pearls. It's been like this since last night. I managed to get home somehow yesterday evening. That's like Detective Gumshoe gently holding her by the hand and leading her here. By the looks of it, I don't think Pearls got any sleep at all last night. Mr. Nick, Miss Nick Maya, she's alright, right? Yeah, she's alright. Either way, I'm gonna save her. You can trust me on that. Please. Please help her. I'm only able to save this common collected. As Pearls is doing the crying for the both of us. Ugh, what a line chat. Let's go look out the window. Oh, you don't want to acknowledge the Gatewater Hotel is literally across the street? Okay. Oh, why can't we examine anything in here? Why can't I examine Charlie? Hello? Did the game developers forget about this room? What happened? I mean, I'll ask her what to do, even though I don't think this is necessary. Um, I have a thought. Huh? You're gonna represent Mr. On Guard, aren't you? Yeah. You don't really seem to have a choice. Um, but what if... What if he is the real murderer? What would you do then, Mr. Nick? Would you fight to get a not guilty for a murderer to save Mystic Maya? I feel like this is like an actual reasonable question, and given that I vaguely recall where this case goes, I get very upset with the conclusion. <laughs> not that I ever reached the true conclusion. Pearls. Let's talk to Mr. On Guard first, okay? All the bad things we want, but it doesn't change a thing. Yeah, you're right. I'm sorry, I, I can't stop thinking about it. It's kind of like the whole game series. They're like, oh, these prosecutors are evil because they only want innocent people to go. And I feel like the logical flip side to it is like, oh, look at those lawyers. They want everybody to go free, even the killers. Do you know what I mean, chat? Like, even when I was playing this game, I'm like, what is he going to do when he inevitably gets somebody that did it, right? I was hoping this case would be that, but we'll, we'll see, chat. It takes a... Uh, it takes a turn. Let's ask about Maya's situation. Pearls, you're really worried about Maya, aren't you? I... I don't have anyone else left in this world. What do you mean? My family's all gone. Her family? My father. He left my mother in the village behind and went away. I'm sorry. And my mother. She did that thing. All for me. Phoenix dot dot dots. Sigmaya. She's like a sister to me. She's all I have left in this world. <laughs> my mother's literally criminally insane. Pretty much. Hey, visiting hours are at 9 o'clock. Why are we here at 8.57? Excuse me. Excuse me, detention center visitor's room. We're here too early. Couldn't wait for visiting hours to start, so Pearls and I came down here early. You better apologize, Phoenix. To visit one nickel samurai charged with the murder of the Gemma Ninja. Let 
Good, good morning. How are you today? I know this situation might be a little tough for you. Um, where... Oh, sorry, dude. I already signed up. I excuse me? I already have life insurance. I signed up a long time ago, so my job is, you know... Oh, no, no, no. We're not insurance salespeople. Really? Dude, I really don't need that right now either. Fire extinguishers? I, I mean, this building isn't my house, so... No, no, no. We're not here to sell you fire extinguishers either. I'm a lawyer. My name is Phoenix Wright. A lawyer? Hold on a sec. I gotta ask my manager, okay? Um... How is he allowed to keep these? Nickel Samurai sure is a strange person, isn't he? I think strange is an understatement. Sorry about that. You're just in time. Huh? You're a lawyer, dude, right? My manners look for a real good run right now, so how about it? Mr. Nick, this is our chance. I have to make him let me take his case. I have to. Let's ask about Matt Ungard to Mas Matt Ungard. Sorry to intrude, but I'd like to ask you for a few personal questions. Oh, that's okay, but dude, my autobiography is coming out soon, so... I say stuff without the publisher's approval. I'm gonna be in real hot water. Hold on a sec, I'm gonna ask my publisher, okay? Mr. Ongard is so lucky. So many people he could talk to. Um... I don't know if he could actually... I don't know if he actually has anyone he could talk to. Sorry about that. Like I thought, the publisher said it'd be real bad if I said anything, dude. Does he have a mind of his own? Let's ask what happened. Mr. Ongard, I'd like to ask you about the murder. Oh, are you covering this for the tabloid as a side job, dude? Um, uh, well, if you want my statement on this, ask through my staff. No, 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 I'm, I'm not asking on behalf of a tabloid. Chat, I'm already, like, internally going... I <laughs> just want you to know, chat, the gimmicks are off the charts already. Did they really need this many gimmicks again after the clown case? Did they? Hold on a sec, I'm gonna ask the president of the studio, okay? Is he alright, Mr. Nick? No, he's not. We're talking about Mr. Ungard's brain here. I wouldn't put my money on it. Sorry about that. Studio president said, even Neo Man Fuji itself knows that I'm not the murderer. Um, Mr. Nick, what's Neo Mount Fuji? It's a mountain in the city of Neo Old Tokyo, the city the Nickel Samurai protects. Um, is that an attorney badge? Mr. Ungard, this is an attorney's badge. Dude, I'm sorry, but I don't have free time to be looking at things like that. Huh? What's you busy with Nickel Samurai stuff right now? I have time to take a lawyer's correspondence course. Why does he believe I'm a salesman? Insurance, then extinguishers? Now this. Welcome, Chris. Also, by the way, hope you enjoy the new emotes. I'm gonna push it there for the people that joined a bit later. I guess I'll present the ticket, because I don't know what else I would show. What's that? It's a ticket for the press conference. You were going to give one after winning the Grand Prix, right? Huh? Me? Yeah, while well, you're in the costume, no less. Um, I never heard anything like that, dude. I only heard about the stage show. Let's leave that kind of stuff to my manager. You didn't know? That's odd. So there we go, there's the hold it, and there's the counterpart. Can I send him the radio transceiver? What does he say about this? Mr. Nick, what are you going to do with that? I don't know yet. I figured I could at least show it to him. Is that a transceiver? Hey, looks like a real nice one, too. I got it as a present from someone. Hmm? Interesting. Also been instructed to take your case. Is that what you heard from the transceiver? Yes. Dude, that's terrible. 
Don't let some disembodied voice boss you around. This coming from a man with a cell phone on his wrist. Well, dude, I think it's about time for me to get going. Please wait. I really need to take your case. It's always other people in need of a lawyer, right? Let me introduce you to a few. Please, please let Mr. Nick represent you. Man, oh man, lawyers these days. Now you dudes use kid support and clients too? You don't take me as your lawyer. Then the killer is going to... Wait, what did you just say? The killer. The, the killer? What's he doing? Looks like he's mulling something over. All right, dude. I accept your terms. Huh? Let you represent me in court. We did it. We did it, Mr. Nick. Uh, yeah. I don't feel any better for it. He doesn't look too happy either. Go ahead, ask me anything. I'll hold that as much as I can. Let's ask the same topics again. Man, I think my life these stars that people know my name. Well, quite the hero, and you're in the national spotlight. I didn't know who he is. Does that mean I'm not a good citizen? Ah, oh, it's really great to be the Nickel Samurai. Dude, lately I just keep getting on more and more popular. True enough. The Nickel Samurai is very popular among high schoolers and secretaries right now. I guess Mr. Ongard has a way of catching the eyes of women. Do you know my motto? Refreshing like a spring breeze. That's what I am. A spring breeze? That's why this kind of scandal is disastrous, dude. I mean, even if we get out of here tomorrow, it's still gonna look bad. <clears throat> but everyone loves a good scandal. Let's ask what happened. Chris saying, yes, Pearls, you're a terrible person and you should feel bad. Pretty much. Pretty much. I wish we could let this one go, Chris. Unfortunately, Maya has been kidnapped, so we have to be his client. Or lawyer, I mean. Can you tell me about your activities last night? After I got the award, I took a break and went back to my room. I had that post-ceremony stage show to do. I was in my medical samurai costume. And you were there alone the entire time? Manager was running around being busy, so yeah. This is the press conference you're supposed to hold after the show. I told you, dude. No idea about any press conference, all right? That's strange. I thought the Nickel Samurai was going to confess something. Anyway, when I was leaving my room, that's when I noticed it was kind of noisy. <laughs> we saved her enough time, says Chris. Let her channel Mia and she can handle this one. Honestly, I'm surprised that isn't the solution. It's been the solution to every other case so far. Mr. Kurita was already dead at the time? Yeah, that's what I gathered from my manager. Beginning to gather this guy can't do a thing on his own. That's when the detective in the green coat showed up. Searched me and then out of the blue, the dude arrested me. Let's ask about the victim. About you and the victim, Mr. Juan Kurita, what sort of... It's got nothing to do with anything, dude. Man, with that face of his, can't even tell he's the same age as me. He wanted to try making a Jam and Ninja movie, even though we all know it'd fail. Oof. Nickel Samurai still won in the end, right? Yeah, I took the Grand Prix by storm. So why would I, the winner, have any reason to kill the guy anyway? Dude, I think it'd be the other way around, you know? The charge of murder. Um, do you know why you were arrested? Guess maybe my full body search went badly. Did they find something on you? Found a button from the Jam and Ninja's costume. A button? I don't get it either. It's caught in the pleats of my samurai pants. Or Hakama. Ah! Uh. 
Dude, really think someone planted it there, though. I'm serious. I wonder if that's what really happened. Guess this is about all I'm gonna get out of him. Mr. Nick? Yeah? Let's ask one last thing. Let's ask Mr. Ungod to see if he really is innocent or not. We can do that? He says, knowing we have the Magatombo in our inventory. Yes. If you use this, the thing you've used in like three cases... Why is Magatama? He won't be able to hide any secrets from you, Mr. Nick. I'm sure of it. I get it. Mr. On Guard, I'd ask you one more question. Please answer me honestly. What is it, dude? Did you kill Mr. Juan Carita? Please put the phone away and answer this question yourself. All right, just so we're clear, dude. I didn't kill anyone. That includes Juan Carita, okay? Now, chat, do you think it's going to be three or four locks? <laughs> what do you think, chat? There's no way we are not getting locks on this question. Chat saying, my god, even Pearls is smarter than us. Phoenix just wants to be light. He can't do anything himself. I mean, that kind of goes with the theme of why I really got frustrated with this game. And just kind of Phoenix in general, which is why I'm kind of looking forward to more protagonists where they're able to figure things out on their own and literally don't get handheld all the all the damn time every single case so anyway chat i'm gonna guess four it could be three i'm gonna guess four phoenix dot dot dots oh nothing popped up there interesting well mr nick nothing not a chain or a lock in sight wow that's actually a plot twist for me <laughs> five would be great i think there is a formation for five it's basically like an uppercase m which means it's all right to trust them. Yeah, it does appear that way. Well, at least I could breathe a sigh of relief knowing my client is innocent. Um, the trial's tomorrow, right? I'm counting on you, dude. To be continued. Well, let's save. I'm going to take, like, a very small break here, chat. I'm just going to refresh my drink since I feel a bit of dryness coming on, and I realized I went through, like, the whole thing already. So be right back, chat. One more moment, I just want to put something away.
Okay, chat, so I think we're good to continue. So let's hop back into the game. March 21st, 11.34 a.m. Right in company law offices. Thank you for the welcome back. Well, at least we were able to get Mr. Matt on guard as our client. We know that he didn't do it, which is very important. <laughs> I, just immediately, I got ultra disappointed, chat. Ultra disappointed. So, so now what should we do? Well, the trial is tomorrow. We only get this one chance. There's only one way to prove Mr. On Guard's innocence. We have to find the real killer. Okay, then let's start looking. Oh, now we can examine this room for some reason. There's a giant building just outside the window. It's the Gatewater Hotel, a high-class luxury hotel. Actually, the crime happened at the recently completed hotel in the center of town. The Gatewater Imperial Hotel. Oh... Okay, so th so they are both called Gatewater, but this one is the Gatewater Imperial Hotel. Okay, so that wasn't a forgetful moment earlier. The game just didn't elude that there's more than one hotel in the chain now. That's fair, I guess. Oh, I'll water it. Uh, it's okay, I already did that. The watering can. Where are you, Mr. Watering Can? Pearls gets too wound up if she's not doing something to distract herself. Hope Charlie can withstand Typhoon Pearls. This is the Nickel Samurai, right? Yeah, that's right. Mr. Nick. Please take care of Mystic Maya and be her Nickel Samurai, alright? My desk. Since I don't usually have time to sit, it's unusually clean. Oh, I cleaned it up some more for you last night. Because I couldn't sleep. Difficult looking legal books stand in a formidable row. They mock me. Oh. Do you need to look up something in one of those law books, Mr. Nick? Which book is it? Which book do you need? It's okay, Pearl. We don't understand the law. <laughs> those aren't gonna help, Phoenix. Um, I can't read those hard books and, um, I can't reach them either. It's okay, Pearls, really. Let's go to the hotel lobby, I guess. We already know Phoenix is illiterate, pretty much. March 21st, Gatewater Hotel, Hotel Lobby. Hey, what do you think you're doing? You can't come in without... Good morning! Hold on, it's you. What is going on around here? I know Chris is just so excited to see Old Bag back. His favorite character. Uh, um... Heard poor Juan was killed. Is that true? It's a bad rerun is what this is. Another steel samurai doing the most evil of deeds. No, no, it's it blame the writers, old bag. Blame the writers. Um, you know, that's not entirely... I'll have you know I was a huge fan of wands. Why, oh, why do all the stars I'm interested in drop one by one like flies? It's always been that way. Ever since I was a little girl in school, this class answer was fine. It was in this cage until it died. And the other kids called me Queen Reaper. Whoever says your name three times in a mirror or something. I couldn't read the rest. Um, actually, I wanted to ask you about the murder and what happened. Hmm. Don't push me, boy. Um, Mr. Nick? Maybe they died to get away from you, old bag. Damn, chat with the harsh criticism today. I, um, I couldn't hear everything she said because she was talking too fast. Miss old bag, could you please speak a little slower? Don't boss me around, you spiky head, smarty pants. Welcome to her new gimmick, Chris. She's going to be doing this constantly. As if speaking fast wasn't enough of a gimmick. I regretfully must talk with her, I think, to advance the plot. My dear Hammer died a year ago in that dreadful ma murder. Was said Manor? And only recently did I find a star that makes this heart go ba-dump again. I don't know what to say. Say. I ask you, why does every star I cheer for always end up kicking the bucket? Um. I'd watch your words, 
No one's going to get away with saying anything bad about my wand. But I haven't said anything. At least now we can't see her face, so never mind, yeah. She likes alternating with her space costume. It hasn't really explained why she's in the space costume. Her, her only explanation so far is, can't you tell I'm with the security detail? I, I don't think it's gone into any reason why she's wearing this. Well, I don't believe a word that woman says anyway. Huh? What woman? An irritating backwater girl with the afro and the horrible country accent. <sighs> I mean, what is the matter of s that manner of speaking supposed to be? Why does she never stop? Honestly, women these days. They don't mean- they don't know the meaning of the word modesty. It's like this, I pressed the flowers or read the- oh gosh. Pearls. Are, are you thirsty? Um, a little. Okay. I'll go get you some juice or something. Thank you very much. Hey, are you paying attention? Youngins these days. So I'm guessing Miss Old Bag has already heard everything from Lada. Let's ask what happened. Let's ask about what happened around the time of the murder. Oh, I don't know anything about that. I was here getting ready. Getting ready? For what? The show, of course. Well, and the press conference afterwards. Cue mysterious music for the magical press conference. Anyway, I don't know anything about the murder. Ah, I see. But... But if you're talking about what I saw, that's different. I saw it very clearly. Oh, uh, she's gonna go on the stand. Chat. Uh, <laughs> just... <laughs> internal rage rising. Mmm, <laughs> more joke characters after the whole circus case. Just what it needed. I needed another joke character. <sighs> I was gonna say, if I was in the chat, I would just be shouting objection with the emote. I'm just letting you know, chat. The objection would be spam right now. <laughs> what? I saw the most important moment of the night. Let's ask what you witnessed, exactly. The most important moment? You don't mean... Oh, so now you treat me with respect, you disrespectful child. Yeah, I was kind of going back and forth with that chat. Did, would you prefer the objection to be animated, but it be limited to subscribers, or leave it as the base stickers, the people that aren't subscribers can use it? That's where I was going back and forth with it. I could see arguments either way with it. So for now, I just added both. But we can always tweak it later. When you speak to your elders, you should always be polite. Really, kids today. Please tell me, what did you see? Uh-oh, chat. Oh, please don't be a lot. Oh, she's four. Oh, oh, chat. Ugh. <laughs> no, I have to find four pieces of evidence. I mean, some of them might be profiles, but ugh. My soul is being worn down, chat. The murder last night was gruesome, wasn't it? But then, what murder isn't? Please don't stray into another tangent. Please. Want to hear more? Then show your respect and bring this lady a present. So we don't have what we need yet. Let's go to the hall. Looks like the investigation is still in full swing. What's those staff and the police are running around like a bunch of headless chickens? I wonder if we could do any investigating of our own in this kind of atmosphere. Well, I don't roll up the sleeves and try. Let's just keep going until we find somebody to talk to. Or enter one of the rooms that we weren't able to get into before, one of the above. March 21st, Gatewater Hotel, hallway. <sighs> Chat, I'm just letting you know, my disappointment, immeasurable. <laughs> like, I feel like... I feel like if there was like if I was if I was in like one of those graphs, like it would be like the lie detector thing, you would just see it like suddenly swiping straight up and straight down from an otherwise steady line. Except that would be that would be the rage meter. <laughs> I just oh, there's so many gimmick characters already. Oh, I know it's not the last one. That's the worst part, Chad. I know it's not. Uh Okay, let's do our best. 
Lana says, Hey, you're here. Been waiting for you, Mr. Lawyer. Lana. Hey, Mr. Coffella, that thief showed his face. What? Arrest him, put him on trial, find him guilty, give him the death penalty. What's wrong, Lana? Are you feeling all right? Looked here and there and up and down the mountain, but it ain't there. So why don't you just hurry and give it back to me, you creep? Um, what are you looking for? My camera, C-A-M-E-R-A. -E it's my life, bro. Excuse me. It's my life, blood. I'm gonna die without my $700 camera. Your camera? Look, don't lots of people say the criminal always goes back to the scene of the crime? And looky looky, here you are. Yup, here I am. Faced with a lot of trouble. Oh, I... I... I didn't realize we, we had to bring out the laugh track already, chat. I didn't realize. I should have been prepared. So chat, we're faced with a lot of trouble. Thank you, Laugh Track. Huh? I guess I'll talk to her begrudgingly, ask about the camera. So, you just lost your camera? It ain't no ordinary camera. You buy it in a store and it's 1600 brand new. Huh? But didn't you say you bought it for 700? I had a nice long talk with the guy at the store. Now five hours, I reckon. I made this itty bitty scratch on it and manager got all huffed up in the face. He gave me his talking to and was real mean about it too. He done made me cry at that. When did you lose your camera? Last night after the murder happened. Must have been when I was busy running around looking into things. That's when I lost sight of my dear, darling, expensive sweetie. Lotta, what did you capture with that expensive camera of yours? I don't rightly know. I snapped a shot at anything that caught my eye. So I don't remember. And besides, I couldn't get anything from my big scoop. Where if Lotta's missing camera is connected to the murder? Lotta's camera. Very expensive item valued at 1600 It was stolen around the time of the murder. Let's ask what happened. Lotta. Please tell me what you know about what happened at the time of the murder. Well, from before the ceremony last night, I was hanging around here in this area. Yeah, actually, I was here until around the time Mr. On Guard was arrested. What were you doing here? You sure went... Are you sure you went to school, city boy? Wherever a lot of heart goes, there's a story to be found. A big scoop to be had. A big scoop? I told you before, I'm gonna be the best tabloid photographer the world's ever seen. Wrecking course, that means I'm always looking for the perfect shot. Wonder what scoop she was after this time. Although, I was also on the lookout for the other stars that were here. So, maybe I wasn't here the entire time. Big scoop. Lotta, are you sure you weren't here the entire time? So you could take a picture for your big scoop? Well, maybe I was. That's what real journalists do. I got some juicy inside info, so I thought to myself, why not get a picture for proof? What kind of story was it that you would want to hang around here? Uh, it's gonna be four. Oh, it's only two. Okay, we could deal with two. Two, two we could work with. Oops, sorry, Mr. Lawyer. Can't be telling you that. Trade secret, you know. Not again. Why does everyone have something to hide? Yeah, that was somewhat merciful, thankfully. We've been stopped, haven't we? Huh, <laughs> yeah, take that, Mr. Lawyer. I'm glad someone around here is happy. Miss Lada and your eye rule smile. Can we go to the... Oh, we can. Let's go to guard's room first. March 21st, Gatewater Hotel. guard's Hotel room. Um, where are we? We're Mr. Mountain Guard's dressing room. This is our client's room. 
Somebody asks if I can help you with something, but I don't know who's saying this line. Uh, uh, we're... You're Mr. On Guard's lawyer, correct? I gathered as much. I also looked for lawyers on my end, but to no avail. Um, how did you know I'm his lawyer? Hello, what's your name and gimmick? I feel like they should all have tags on there, like the hello my name is and my gimmick is. They should just, they just wear the stickers, it makes it much faster. You were just saying that he is your client. In a situation like this, the only person who would use such a word would be his lawyer. Wow! It's a simple deduction, really. The trial is tomorrow and Mr. Ungard's situation is looking rather grim. So you came here, one stop in your mad dash. To find clues to build his case, correct? Well, you're not totally right, but you're not totally off either. It's really not the time to be showing off, Mr. Nick. I am Adrian Andrews. Hate to waste time, so let's get down to business. Uh-oh, are we going to defeat the Huns, chat? All right. She may be of small stature, but appearances can be deceiving. I like how they say she's of small stature, but she looks like the same height as every other person we've talked to. Because <laughs> they all fit within the camera shot. Just saying, Chad. I feel like if they wanted to do that, they needed to pan downwards. Let's examine the room first. That's the bedroom over there. That's a bed? Wow, they really big beds here. There's some samurai-looking clothes on the sofa here. Um, I think that jacket-looking thing is called a happy. Whatever it is, I'm sure something like that would make a great souvenir. Maya would be absolutely thrilled. Probably Mr. Ungard's suitcase. For someone who's only going to be here for the award show, this is a lot of stuff. Looks like he's about three days' worth of clothes in here. Tars really are different from us, aren't they? Looks like dishes left over from dinner. A dinner for two, at least. I'm sure that Mr. Ungard and Miss Andrews plates. Looks like they had T-bone steaks. Let's look over studio and some T-bone steaks. There is a surprising lack of things to investigate in this room. Huh. Would have thought we would have gotten more out of that, but apparently not. Let's talk to her. Night of the murder. I assume the first thing you need to know is what everyone was doing that night, correct? Yes, that is correct. Then I will tell you. For the award ceremony, at dinner with Mr. On Guard. Why is she flashing a card with a shell on it? That's weird. In this very room, I might add. Dinner. What did you eat? I told you, I hate to waste time with trifling details. You take a look at the table yourself, you wouldn't need to ask me. Eh, she's a lot of fun at parties. When the award show was starting, I headed for Viola Hall. After that show ended, you came back to this room? No. And some small errands to run. Help with the preparations in the lobby. Oh. Preparations for the post-ceremony show, I guess. When it was time for the post-ceremony show, I came back to call for Mr. On Guard. After that, I went to visit Mr. Corita. That's when you found his body, isn't it? Really held strong through everything. Yeah. Just seemed to be mentally tough as nails. Let's ask about her relationship to Ungard. Um, so... About you and... Stop right there. You aren't seriously about to ask how Mr. Ungard and I are related, are you? Sorry. I have no idea how he could choose you as his lawyer. Why did she have to go and say something like that? Mr. Nick, come down and hang in there. I'll give you a shoulder rub to relieve your stress later, alright? Already gave you my name earlier, but I'll add that I'm Mr. Ungard's manager. His manager? Speaking of manager, did the victim Mr. Karita have one? No, he did not. He didn't? Global Studios has a very different policy from Worldwide Studios. And that Worldwide Studios does not assign individual managers to their stars. I see. 
Is she trying to tell us something with the card? If you're in danger, show us the card three more times. It's probably plot relevant. Otherwise, why would she be flashing it? I just don't know what it means yet. We'll find out, I guess. This industry is very ruthless and unforgiving. Actually, you look quite ruthless and unforgiving yourself to your poor partner. Dragging a little girl like her to places like this, honestly. You're wrong, I, I'm doing this out Miss Maya. Pearls, calm down and hang in there. Buy your juice later, all right? Uh... So we didn't really get anything out of this conversation, which is a bit concerning. Let's go to the Corita's ho hotel room then. That is a lot of bears. March 21st, Gatewater Hotel, Caritas Hotel Room. Mr. Nick, where are we? We're in Mr. Juan Caritas, Room Pearls. Mr. Carita? The victim. Which makes this the crime scene, too. Oh, it's you! So, what's happened? The kidnapper! Has he contacted you again? Not yet. He probably won't until we win Mr. On Guard's acquittal. Um, you doing okay, pal? Hanging in there? Just want Maya to be alright. We we'll don't have a lot of time left, but I'm gonna help you as much as I can, pal. Can you do that? If we want to look around the crime scene. Just this once. Special circumstances, right, pal? I'll even tell you everything I know, but you gotta keep quiet. It's my neck on the line here. Thank you. Oh, that's right. I got you guys a map of the hotel, pal. Here you go, little missy. Wow, you're giving it to me? Thank you. Huh, wouldn't want you to get lost in a hotel too big for its own good. Mr. Nick, I got a map. That's great, Pearls. Um, Mr. Nick, I can't read what it says. Hotel guide map added to the court record. Map of the Gatewater Hotel around the crime scene. So I'll talk to him about cause of death. Do you know what was the cause of death? Well, technically, the final autopsy report isn't out yet, but one look at the victim should tell you, pal. It should? Yeah, here's a picture. There's a knife in his chest. Yeah, pal, that's the murder weapon. So he was stabbed to death. I'm looking at the fingerprints down at the lab right now. There were fingerprints on the knife? Yup. It looks like they're pretty sure they're Mr. Ungard's prints, pal. That's bad. Real bad. Prime photo, photo of Juan Carter's murder scene added to the court record. Let's go to reason for arrest. Why was Mr. On Guard arrested? Because we had evidence on him. Evidence? Looks like the victim, Juan Carta, really put up a big fight. I'm sorry, there's like a robot bear? What the heck is that on the floor? Yeah, well look at the crime scene and you could tell. Can you? Signs of a struggle everywhere. I mean, aside from the vase on the right-hand side, everything just looks normal. I guess also the phone. Well, yeah, during the fight, his button came off. Some guard said something about a button. Only like one of the Jammin' Ninja's buttons got caught in a Sakama. But that's not all. What? There was a witness, pal. A witness? Who is it? That lady, Miss Oldbag. Please. Anyone but her. Prosecution has pl plenty of evidence to make a solid case. Not to mention there's something around where the Vic was that's a little off. Something that's a little off. As in... As in that's what for you to figure out, pal. Alright, let's try to figure it out, Mr. Nick. Well... We got more evidence, but let's keep examining the room in case we could find more. All sorts of things in this refrigerator. The carrot juice bottle and the tomato juice bottle are both empty. Empty? Too much of a hassle to throw them away, I guess. Real vegetable juices. Guess he must have been a real health nut. Oh, 
There's a beet, some ketchup, and a bottle of strawberry jam, too. Maybe red was his favorite color? Hmm. Wow, there are a lot of bears. Alarm clock ones, collector's editions, stuffed teddies, plastic models. Pretty overwhelming. Is there kind of bear he doesn't have? There's even a few in the trash can. Yeah. I feel like maybe the guy didn't really like bears. Poor teddies. No. No. I thought we were free of you. I thought I didn't have to voice you anymore. Why are you haunting me? What did I do wrong, chat? Why are we flashbacking to the clown? No, I don't want to voice this character. Please, please don't let this character show up again. I beg of you. Please do not be in any of the future games. I'm dying for you to not include this character ever again. It's hard to bear with all these problems, growl. <laughs> I'm skipping the dialogue as much as I can. Phoenix dot dot dots. I don't think I want to bear with the trauma the last case caused me. Phoenix, I'm still not over the trauma. That's a fresh wound. Let it let it heal. What's wrong, Mr. Nick? <laughs> Things I don't want to think about anymore. The game reminded me very rudely. Hmm, it's so messy here. Rose really likes things neat and tidy, I take it. A lot of electronic things in here I've never seen before. Hey, Mr. Nick, tell me what they are, pretty please. Okay, that over there is a watch. You wear it on your wrist. I know what a watch is. Oops, for a second there, I forgot I was talking with Pearls, not Maya. It's a suitcase. So many things in it that I bet it barely closes. There's this clothes, a dryer, an electric shaver, a calculator. Why do you save a calculator? All the stars pack too much stuff like Mr. Karita? We're not going to talk about the calculator? What? What's that in a travel briefcase? I also don't have a comment about the big bear. So that's a bed, right? Yep. It's big, but it is a bed. Oh, Mr. Nick, it's so soft. Big beds must be a rarity for her. I don't have any comment about the phone on the floor, apparently. Bottles of cosmetics are scattered all over the floor. It's probably where Mr. Karita fought his assailant. Where are these bits of glass from? Flower vase, maybe. There are flowers on the floor, but I don't know what they are. I don't know much about flowers, do you, Mr. Nick? This is a guitar case, I guess. A little beat up, but still usable. That's strange. The guitar's not here. Maybe you forgot to bring it to the show. But Mystic Maya said the bright red guitar was the Jamma Ninja's signature item. It's true. Huh? This guitar case is wet, but it's only wet on top of the lid. Yeah, some water inside the case. This is water, isn't it? Guitar case. Found next to the victim. Empty. There's some water, but only on top of the lid. Added to the record. It's a beautiful wine glass, and there's... Tomato juice in it. Ew, tomato juice. I don't really like it much. What is written on this vase, and how can it be misread? Yeah, that's true. I like to think we pieced it together, and it just has the word dummy on it. <laughs> There's a bottle of it on the table over there. Probably where this came from. But doesn't it seem weird? What seems weird? I mean, everything else is scattered all over the floor. She's right. The flower vase was broken and the makeup is thrown everywhere. Why is this glass the only thing that's still alright? One glass found next to the victim. It's filled with tomato juice. No sign it's been drank. I like how she's pointing out the clues, by the way. Not not us finding it out. It's like Mr. Kreta had dinner last night. This bottle, it's tomato juice. And a lot of food at the award show last night. I wonder if the stars only had gone on stage after eating a meager meal like this. I'm not gonna talk about Robot Bear? That's like one of the only interesting things in the whole room. 
Whatever, chat. We got robbed. Were the phone on the seat either? For some reason? None of those are important? Okay. Well, when in doubt, present the evidence we found. What can you tell me about this guitar case? Oh, that. It's just what I heard, pal, but that's the Gemma Ninja's signature item. The guitar case? Robot Bear is perfectly normal and interesting. He's just Robot Bear. No low for Robot Bear. No, not that. What do you take me as? I mean, the guitar inside, of course. But the guitar is missing. Yeah, we look for it too. It's not normal for a person to forget to bring their most famous item to a reward show. Next opponent in the bear game run by the psychotic zoologist. Yeah, not quite not quite Shadow Hearts 2. It's starting to sound like the red guitar is related to the case after all. Okay, we'll present the wine glass. So how about this wine glass? Ah, so you noticed it, pal. Whole crime scene was a mess, but this class was the only thing that was untouched. You noticed that too, Detective Gumshoe? Oh, you missed Shadow Hearts too? In the future, we could just replay the game. It, it could technically be our Halloween game again. I just need to find a way to make it run smoother next time, that's all. No, actually, Miss Von Karma noticed it first. Yeah. Girls noticed it before me, too. Hey, wait a minute. So, does that mean Miss Von Karma's here at the hotel? Chat, all hope is gone. Is it really mysterious someone <laughs> they left the tomato juice untouched? Blah. No love for tomato juice. Yeah, she's around. Man, you're gonna be in so much trouble, pal. Defend us from the whip robot bear. Sadly, it cannot hear our pleas, nor does it act in its emotionless heart. Especially if she catches you in here. Well, you can bet the instant I see her, I'll be running the thousand meter dash. Beep beep chat. What's that beeping noise, Mr. Nick? Hmm. Heard this sound somewhere before. It's Miss Von Karma. Huh? For some reason, whenever I hear that sound, she pops out of nowhere and whips me. Come to think of it, that's exactly what happened the last time. Sorry, I gotta make myself scarce later, pal. Yow! <sighs> right, chat, just deep sigh. Give me a moment. At last you reveal your true nature, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Ugh, it'd be too much ask for you to be nice to me for a change. So, you're the type to steal information from pitifully hopeless detectives. That's very dishonorable of you. Ow! Hey, don't you dare run, Scruffy McTrenchcoat. Ugh! I didn't think the detectives of this country could be this pitiful. Ah! Detective, come over here for a second. Yo! And then she should be jailed. Hmm. I feel better knowing at least you were man enough to face your punishment. He was so scared. He just froze up on the spot. Mr. Phoenix Wright. You have soiled my perfect prosecution record. I'll never forget that. This time, victory is mine. Victory is yours. Is that all this means to you? Well, what? Hmm. Come, Scruffy. The investigation briefing is about to begin. I yes, sir. This isn't over yet. I swear on my family's honor. Ow. What did she throw at me now? What is this? Well, I guess this means I gotta get back to the precinct now, pal. If you ever need me, come down to the criminal affairs department, all right? Yeah, Honor and her family. Yeah, that that ship sailed uh, last game. And if you can, try not to let Miss Von Karma see you. Oh, 
So I've got to add it to the table. Mr. Nick, what's this piece of paper? Looks like... One to my dearest Wendy. Ugh. Called an autograph. Autograph? Paper's got Mr. Karita's name written on it, so it says autograph. Can't read it at all. To be honest, I've never seen writing that looks like this. Ah, oh, special way of writing called cursive. Look here. See how it says to my dearest Wendy in more normal letters here? This sloppy, unreadable writing. It's crazy and cruel to give this to someone. Hold on. Wendy. Heard that name somewhere before. Phoenix, please. <laughs> right, chat? Phoenix, please. You literally... What do you mean you just heard this name before? You just... You talked to her. You... You... You couldn't even reach this room without talking to old bag. You're killing me. It's in the it's in the bio. Oh, actually, it's not. Well, no, no. I'm pretty sure her real name is Wendy Oldbag. It, it's still technically in the bio. <laughs> autograph on Credit's autograph to my dearest Wendy's written on it has been added to the court record. Okay, so now we might have enough. I'm going to check one more time. And I missed the topic, right? Uh, Actually, you know what I should do? I don't think she'll say anything about the murder evidence. Let's have her talk about each of the people here. Between Madame Guard and Juan Corrida. Let's see if we can squeeze out another piece of info. I asked to become Mr. On Guard's manager. He's a pleasure to manage with his nice disposition. Hmm. Mr. Guard does seem like a rather weak-willed man. Always doing as he's told. He's always saying my manager, right, Mr. Nick? He's already blank old back from his memory. Smart. True. Did you know the victim, Mr. Karita? Yes, I knew him. The world is such a small place, after all. Did you know about his rivalry with the Nickel Samurai? Honestly, they were like children when it came to that. Time and time again, these two competed with each other over the most trivial things. Either one of them wasn't so stubborn, then maybe no one would have needed to die. I a hunch this woman knows more than she's letting on. Must know why one curried it was killed. All right, that sounds like we got a new topic. There we go, motive for murder. Because we never got a lock with her, so I was thinking we probably needed to present more. That was my logic behind that, if Chad is curious. Do you have any ideas as to as to why Mr. Curried was, was murdered? Why would you ask me about such a thing? I'm just doing my job, so do you have any ideas? Oh, no. Oh, no. Everybody's got so many damn locks. No, chat. No. There's so many pieces of evidence. Sorry, but there's nothing more I have to add to this conversation. Is it a psych lock, Mr. Nick? Yes. It's going to be more and more of these lately. I feel like this is pretty much fourth wall breaking on that one, to be honest. Well, I don't think we have enough for any of these yet. If we could find Lada's camera, we can move forward, I think. So we need to just keep going until we basically find it. And then presumably we go forward from Lada, work our way to the assistant, and then end with Old Bag, or Old Bag and then the assistant. Oh, Mr. Wright, how are you? Ah, Mr. Powers, have you been here the entire time? Yeah, people connected to the murder aren't allowed to go home, let alone leave. Let's ask about the Nickel Samurai. Can you tell me a little more about the Nickel Samurai TV show? Yeah, I think the thing we're missing with Lada, we need to know where her camera is. We need to know what the scoop is. 
We know from Old Bag we have the autograph, which could be used potentially as one of the locks. I imagine one or two of them are probably profiles, and we need like one more piece of info. Because I imagine we're gonna. We have to present the fact that one of them is in costume as a profile image. So we're probably gonna present like. She was here to see Juan Carrida, Matt on guard showed up, and then use this as the third piece of evidence. But I feel like we're also maybe missing a piece of evidence. Tell me a little more about the Nickel Samurai TV show. Okay. The Nickel Samurai is an action hero program aimed towards kids. It's the sequel to the Steel Samurai. I see. This time, there are three samurai brothers. Aluminum, tin, and of course, the Nickel Samurai. It's a love why in Neo Old Tokyo. It's a love why? What? I'm not getting something on that one. I, I see, wait. A love what? Love why? This girl Sayo works at the tea shop and all three guys fall for her at the same time. Oh, I guess the Y shape is like the three brothers colliding over this one girl. Anyway, Sayo's actually the daughter of the evil Strawberry Clan's leader. Sounds like an unusual situation. Like Romeo and Juliet. Times three. Yeah. Strange thing is, sort of forbidden love story is really big with the office ladies. Um. Yes, Pearl. What happens next? I want to know. Miss Sayo, does Miss Sayo fall in love? She does, doesn't she? Every Sunday at 8 a.m. I'm gonna stop watching Kids Masterpiece Theater and starting this week. Can't believe she's really considering it. Let's ask about the Jamming Ninja. So what's the Jamming Ninja TV show like? It started from a remake of an old movie, to tell you the truth. That is quite a face he is making, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> That's like almost emotable. <laughs> he looked like just the face region, not impressed. <laughs> not impressed, chat. The Jam and Ninja, like the Samurai shows, is geared towards kids. It's the story of a ninja who can't scale a wall but became a big pop star anyway. Uh, what? He was really lousy ninja. Absolutely couldn't do any ninja things right at all. But boy, could he sing. This trusty bright red guitar in hand took the ancient world by storm. A ninja with a bright red guitar? And then the final fight in front of his beloved Princess Masola. Jammin versus the Morot Moromachi 5. Suddenly, our brave hero catches a Natsu Jammin cold the night before the Battle 3. Oh, that's too bad for him. Yeah. This kind of pop music based love story is something high school girls really like. Is it? Um. Yes, Pearl. What happens next? I want to know. Jammin. The Jammin Ninja. Will he be able to sing? What about Princess Masola? Every Sunday at 8 a.m. Um, which show should I watch? Hmm. Can't believe she's really considering it. Hmm. I didn't really get any information from that. Okay, so he's the only person we haven't gotten to lock with, so clearly I need to start showing him things. Do I ask about the camera? Do I, sh do I show him the people in the case? Let's ask about the victim, I guess. It'd be around the same time as Matt and everything, you know. Really? It started out small. First it was singing contests, then swimming competitions. Then it was bowling tournaments, and then it was who could throw the best New Year's parties. Juan was always trying to one-up Matt. But lately, those two were escalating to more and more dangerous things thought that no good would come of it all, so I began to worry. 
Ben Juan's story ended so soon. That's younger than me, but you could practically see his star potential. His star potential? I got his autograph the other day. Feels kind of wrong now, doesn't it? I don't care what people say. That didn't kill Juan. I know he didn't. Never would have thought I'd see her, her here of all places. Last time we saw each other was during that really bad incident. You know. I mean, when I look back now, I think of the good things, so it's not so bad, I guess. Yeah, I'll have to go back in time to relive a few of those good things. No. That's not funny. Yeah, I guess not. Hey, that's Miss Andrews. She's Matt's manager. Actually, I was interested in her for a little bit. Just a little. Hmm. Mr. Power likes this type of woman. What do you know about Miss Andrews? Well, see, here's the thing. I don't really know her, know her, you know? There's sort of a small rumor around... About, oh, excuse me, going around about her right now. A rumor? Ah, oh, if you're interested, be glad to share what I know. Okay, so this might be what we need to start advancing the plot. So happy, looks like a lion that's found his next meal. No, that's just his hair, Phoenix. It's just the hair. The gossip on Adrian. You mind telling me about this gossip? Ah, so you are interested in it. I figured you would be. Yeah? I have such a weakness for celebrity gossip, too. Uh, oh, really? You too, huh? Yeah, take a look at this. Looks like a tabloid. Miss Oldbag would read. Alright, let's see here. Jammin' Midnight Rendezvous. To the mysterious yet beautiful manager to the stars. Miss A.A. You see now, don't you? What? Stop pretending to be in the dark, Mr. Wright. Juan Corrida didn't have a manager of his own. Which means if we're talking about a certain manager with the initials A.A. Adrian Andrews? Yes, exactly. This is big news. But, it seems kind of odd. That woman, Miss Andrews. Together with the biggest rival of her client? Ah, oh, it's that wonderful thing that can only happen between two people. Mr. Powers looks so happy! Dun dun dun, indeed, Kirk. Pearls is just following along, not having any idea as to why he's smiling. Well, like the saying goes, one man's garbage is another man's treasure. Magazine clipping, an article from the tabloid Gossip Land has been added to the port record. Guess we could try talking to her again? Hmm. Okay, so... Actually, maybe we got what we needed just now. So if she was here for the big scoop, she could have been here for the magazine clipping? Because she was in front of Matt on guard's room, right? Yeah, maybe this is it. Maybe this is it. I think we have enough. I think we have enough to go further. Take that, chat. Big scoop. I guess I could add a take that te technically to our emotes as well. Lana, will you please answer my questions? On the night of the murder, why were you loitering around the victim's room? I told you, didn't I? For my scoop. What I don't want to know about are the details of this scoop. That's not something I can tell you. I mean, there's... That there is my bread and butter. All right, then. Unpleasant tabloid photographer looking for a scoop. I'm going to say that you were looking into a scandal. Gah. It'd be that you, lot of heart, were looking for a break with a huge story. Perhaps an unfolding scandal between Juan Carrera and this person. present the manager take that, take that chat Th this woman she's adrian andrews man on guards manager hmm the nickel samurai's manager 
while secretly meeting with his rival, the Jammin' Ninja. It'd be the hottest story of the season, wouldn't it? You're pretty good at this guessing thing, Mr. Lawyer. You can't just make up any old thing and think it'll make the papers. Gotta have backup. Backup? Yeah, yeah. You gotta have that... that what's it? New sauce? Um, you mean new source? That's it. So show me something that shows that Huang guy had something with Miss Andrews. Now we're gonna present the photo. Or not the photo, we're gonna present this. Because this says Miss AA and Juan Carrita in the same sentence, more or less. Take that. This is the article for, from a certain weekly tabloid. Jammin' Midnight Rendezvous? To the mysterious yet beautiful manager to the stars, Miss A.A. Ah! Miss Carter didn't have a manager of his own. What's more, his rival, Mr. Ungard's manager, Adrian Andrews. She has the initials A.A. You saw this article and then thought to take some pictures of them as proof. That's why you were lurking around Mr. Curry's door last night. Wah! Oh. I guess she was in front of Curry's. Oops, misremembered. But not punished for misremembering. Unlock successful. I mean, technically she's in front of both. They're right across from each other, or whatever. You were looking at Mr. Curry and Miss Andrews' affair, weren't you? You got it. I was gonna get myself a scoop by catching him in a secret meeting. There's already an article about it in one of the weekly tabloid magazines. It's no longer breaking news. What you say? Her initials are AA. What kind of fake thing is that? That ain't proof. That ain't no proof of nothing. People are gonna want to see real proof. Well, at least I do. That's what I was doing, getting photos. Oh. I'm gonna whip up the reader's interest with some gossip and a little misleading. A little misleading? What? Then spice it up a little and have myself an exclusive story. Wow, a lot of nice journalistic integrity you got there. I already finished writing out my spicy article, you know. But the paper I wrote it on, my note to myself, it's gone. Your note to yourself? It was inside the case of my $1,600 camera. They don't run off together. I came here for my big story. Didn't come here to have my treasure disappear on me. Yeah, I understand. It's enough to make a gal go bonkers, I tell you. What's with people now, anyway? Never thought I'd see the day when someone done steals something from me. Really want that note back, huh? I have no idea why, though. Surround that note is probably a bold-faced lie. Let us camera updated in the court record. Stolen the night of the murder. Tabloid article about the victim was in the case. So that didn't really give us anything new to work with, which is kind of bad. Hmm. Can we present the autograph to her to advance the plot? Let's see. Oh. She didn't want to see the autograph? Hmm. Uh, well, I mean, uh, but we should at least see what we need here and then we'll we'll go from here. I'm trying to, I'm not sure if I should do the secretary first or maybe we have to get something about the secretary's past from the police station because they mentioned going to the police station like we did somehow the police station needs to be used to solve this logic string so i'm trying to think from like a meta perspective what the game would need me to do so we only have one piece of evidence to her so unless all three of these are profiles i don't know if we have what we need but i guess we can find out all right i'll be honest with you for now and please tell us what you saw but oh what a waste here I was having a perfectly good chance to have a little fun at you youngin's expense. 
I am a little devil after all. Um, doesn't that imply you aren't a good person? All right, I'll give you what you want. She did ask for a little gift earlier, so that's why I was thinking this is probably fine. That's, that's Juan's autograph. Yes, it is. And it even says to my dearest Wendy on it. That's me, right? Right? Um, my name is Wendy Obax. So that Wendy has to be me, right? Well, it may say Wendy, <clears throat> but somehow I don't think Juan had this Wendy in mind when he signed it. Oh, please, give it to me. Let me have it, please. Uh-uh. I can't let you have it, just like that. Yes, yes, I know. How about an exchange? Oh. Wow. She must really want this autograph. Well, okay, I guess, I guess that's kind of funny. It's kind of funny she had four locks and most of them went. I'll, I'll give it that. That, that. that brought a small smile to my face. For a moment. My offer isn't good enough for you. Fine, Mr. Wright, you win. Wendy Obeck, ready to open up her heart. All for my dearest swan. Apparently, we did have everything we needed. Unlock successful. Autograph given to Wendy Dearest. So that's what she witnessed. I feel bad for you now. Huh? I tell you, I saw him that night. I saw him coming out of Juan's room. You're kidding. Oh no! It was about ten minutes before Juan's body was discovered. So it's reminded of a different game when they're talking about body discovery. It was just a coincidence. I was on my way to the toilet, minding my own business. And? Did you tell that to the police? Well, of course. Thought I could get a gift certificate or two out of it. Maybe more. What a great person, chat. Gift certificate? I've been recruited again for that part of the trial. You know, the trial tomorrow. This time, you're gonna get it. I'm gonna work hard to get your client pronounced guilty. Mr. Ungard hasn't done anything bad. I don't care about details like that. I know he did my dearest poor Juan in. I just do. And yellow belly chicken. Yellow belly chicken? I wonder what that would look like. I trust my senses. I know when someone did something bad, and I say he did it. What did Mr. Ungard ever do to deserve this? ask about his past. Maybe this will give us a reason to look him up in the criminal affairs and bring that in as a secret that was supposed to be suppressed. It's maybe because he had a criminal record and that's why she didn't want to share any information from us. And that was about the confession. Maybe this is where it's going, that he's confessing he had crimes. Maybe. I'm trying to think ahead and chat a little bit. Maybe? Select on guard's past. What did Mr. Ungard do to make you so... You don't know? That guy, he framed my Juan. Created that scandal that plagued poor Juan. Mr. Nick! What is it? What's a scandal? Oh, um... I'll tell you about that after we get home, okay? Poor Juan. Led astray by the wiles of that vile temptress. Mr. Nick... What do vials and wild temptress mean? Ah, uh, um, why don't we just listen to what Miss Olbag has to say for now, okay, Pearls? So, Miss Olbag, who is this woman you're talking about? Adrian Andrews, of course. Who else? That guy, he shoved the girl in the wand on purpose. His own manager? But why? Thought lawyers were smart. It's to create a scandal to make one lose face. That girl drove Juan into a scandal. It dragged his reputation through the mud. That's like a pretty standard definition of a scandal to me. How do you know about that anyway, Miss Old Bag? I'm one of Juan's biggest fans. I'm always out there gathering information. There's nothing I don't know. And do you have proof that Mr. On Guard did what you say he did? Next week's issue of a certain magazine says so. 
Uh, of course. Uh, tabloid. Next week? Doesn't mean it's something people don't know about yet? Why would Miss Olbag have information like that? Where did she get it? Phoenix ass standing right next to the cameras about to record a big scoop. <laughs> right, chat? Jeez. <laughs> the last horse finishing the race, chat, yet again. <laughs> Alright, well... Let's go to the criminal affairs department. Maybe we'll get what we need. The blue badger's up on the windowsill, chat. Look at it in its glory. March 21st, police station, criminal affairs department. Detective Gumshoe said they had an investigation briefing. Yeah, oh, he's back. Hey, so you came, pal. Why the blunt greeting? Um, because there's nothing to be friendly or happy about. What do you mean by that? Well, things look perfect this time around. The evidence and testimony are airtight. But, but... We can't just roll over and die. We have to stay positive. Oh, it's kind of cute. Mr. Nick, what is the stuffed animal's name? That's the blue badger. It was my idea. I made it. It's this precinct's mascot, you know. Oh, wow. I'll get him a signed mascot of every police station. It's the last thing I do. Hope you succeed in your mission, sir. Poster of a female police officer. Wait, no. That's the latest babes in uniform calendar. My bad. Wow. Big yikes. These are detectives' desks. There are companies and files in each one. Funny, they're a lot tidier than I expected. Guess the detectives don't spend a lot of time at their desks. It must be one of the detectives. It's probably something to himself. Freeze, police. Come against the wall. Hands where I can see him. Hey, what are you doing, Gumshoe? Their hands, not yours. He must be doing image training for arrests. Nothing else to observe here, it looks like. Let's talk. Airtight evidence. So what do you mean the evidence is airtight? I can't give you all the details, pal, but there's two big pieces. Two? And both of them are in this photo. The first is the button missing from the victim's chest. Hmm. It's the button you found during your body search of Mr. On Guard. Yup, I found it in the folds of the Nickel Samurai Special Pants. Um, uh, the second one is... The knife in his chest, pal. Fingerprints on the knife in his chest to be exact. Fingerprints? Um... Whose are they? You didn't even have to ask, Little Missy. It's obvious. They're mad on guards. Hmm. Phoenix dot dot dots. Tomorrow's trial. Talk about being stuck between a rock and a hard place. Okay, let's ask about the airtight testimony. So what about this airtight testimony? It's that old secretary lady, Miss Oldbag. Perk saying, oh no, man on guard probably knows fencing and how to properly stab someone. I mean, possibly. Thought so. What do you mean you thought so? Did she tell you something, pal? Uh, well... And I even told her not to open that mouth of hers and blab to anyone. Her blab knob is stuck on 10. There's no turning it down. Trust me. You have to check with this manager to find out? Nice. That's a classic comeback from chat. Yeah, well, Miss Olbag saw it all, pal. She saw Mr. On Guard come out of the victim's room around the estimated time of death. In no way. Uh, 
Okay, so we didn't really gain any new information. Hmm. It's a little concerning, to be honest. I was kind of hoping for more out of this. I'm just thinking if there's somebody we didn't talk to. So we didn't get a lock on him, so that tells me... Okay, let's present some people to him, and then I'll present maybe a piece of evidence. See if he says anything new. Right, so this is what he said before. No, none of this is advancing the plot. Um... Is it possible he'll make a comment on the newspaper clipping? Or magazine clipping? We're pretty interested in this bit of gossip ourselves. The scandal with Mr. Karina, but why? Well, two years ago, a woman named... Oh, I thought I said named. A woman committed suicide. Suicide? Her name was Celeste Impacts. Well, I think we just, I think we basically just learned our motive. And she was Juan Carita's manager. Victim's manager? Well, that's not all, pal. Miss Impax was Miss Adrian Andrews' mentor. She taught Miss Andrew everything she knows about the business from square one. Her mentor? Woman who was both Mr. Carita's manager and Miss Andrews' mentor. Could her suicide have something to do with this case? Yes, Phoenix. Distant relative, a genio sign. Oh no, the Sue E sign. All right, chat. Well, let's let's put ourselves let's put ourselves in the shoes of what I think is happening. Again, having not completed the case before, I think it's fair for me to finally give my thoughts on where I think this case is going. So we just established motive or why the other person, Matt on guard, wants Juan Carita dead. If we take the killer's word for it and we look at his name, we can assume the killer killed Juan Carita. So that's why he was saying he knows that Juan Carita was not killed by Matt on guard because he is the one that did it. And he would have the ability to potentially deliver the food because he's a bellboy, so that gives him potential movement and everything else. Now, alternatively, there could be something going on that we don't know about. Man on guard could have been in that room. It's possible he did something he wasn't supposed to. I'm just thinking. To be continued. Let me, let me think about that for a little bit. Let, 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 me, let me let it cook for a bit. I gotta think a little bit. What would Matt on guard be doing in that room if he knew the other person was gonna be killed? Let me think about it. What his reason was. I'll think about it. Okay, so anyway, Phoenix says, could her suicide have something to do with this case? Obviously. Do you want to know more about her, pal? Yes. She was the victim's manager and was also Miss Adrian Andrews' mentor. It's been two years since her suicide, and now those two are linked again by another death. Maybe it's just a coincidence, but... Whoa! I'm getting sick of dealing with one foolish idiot after another. Miss Von Karma! You can't seem to stop allying yourself with the enemy, can you? I don't need a traitor in my midst. You don't... You don't mean... I do, Scruffy. You have 30 minutes to get out of here. You are no longer needed. Goodbye. Th that's... Hmm. Wait. Please wait, sir. Quiet. 
if it weren't for traitors like you, I would have won. Is that what you want to say? Please tell me this is like Edgeworth or somebody. I, I need I need somebody to like I need I need this to be Edgeworth or somebody chat. I'm begging you. Don't be another joke character. I, I'm dying for a more serious character. Dot 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 exclamation mark. Who? That voice. Edgeworth. Oh, thank you. Oh. Gosh, I don't want her in the trial so bad. I don't want her in the trial so bad, chat. <laughs> it's like begging for anybody. I would have taken that old guy that we beat in the first case. <laughs> what was his name? Pain or something? I don't even remember his full name. I would have taken him, chat. I'm gonna be real with you over her. She's okay by herself, but with everybody else, it is just too much. It's been a long time, right? Oh, gee, chat. That, that feels like bait for the quote we have in chat. This person? This is Mr. Edgeworth? What am I going to do with you? Still blaming others when it things go wrong. It has been a long time, Lenith. It has been a long time, Lenith. <laughs> Here, the egg bear, briefly. You haven't changed a bit, Francisca. Yay! You, you, how dare you show your face to me without a shred of shame upon it? You've soiled the Von Karma name, dragged it through the mud. You even ran away with your tail between your legs, like the ill-bred dog that you are. Are you talking about the Von Karma family creed? To be perfect in every way? Then let's hear it, Francisca. How are things going? I hear you are having a rough time maintaining perfection in this country. You... You seem to be getting crushed under the weight of it all. That's why I came back. Keep your assumptions to yourself. I... I haven't given in yet. I won't lose. This case is mine. I'll never hand it over to you. Never. Mr. Phoenix Wright. I will see you tomorrow. In court. It will be a clinical lesson on the meaning of total victory. Hmm. Still the same wild mare she always was. Guess we'll talk to him about tomorrow's trial. I thought you, the prosecutor Miles Edgeworth, had gone and died. Mr. Nick! I... Never wanted to see you again. I think that's enough of a warm welcome for someone you haven't seen in a year. You're going to run tomorrow's trial. You heard her, right? And while Mare hasn't given in yet, it seems. Stop describing a woman as a horse, please. So no, I don't think I'll be making an appearance. Your hatred for me is quite unhealthy, not to mention one-sided. But I will say one thing. You can't win on your own at the trial tomorrow. What is that supposed to mean? Something definitive that you lack. Is it a brain? <laughs> and working together is the definition of teamwork. It's the power to find the truth. The truth? In order to understand this case, you have to understand a certain truth. Oh, actually, Chad, I think he just told me everything I needed to know. <laughs> Chad, you can't give me these kinds of hints. Listen, like I was thinking about it. You heard me think about it earlier. I think I have now solved the case. <laughs> I'm going to declare this and I want to see how close I am. And Chad, you can give your own opinions. So 
the news conference, it was meant to out about the about the woman that died two years ago, and it's probably involving the suicide. I noticed they haven't brought it up yet, so it's possible that one of them will reveal the suicide note, because how else would they know it's a suicide, quote-unquote, kind of things? So, I'm wondering if that was the motive for the death, and that's why Matt and Guard was there, was to receive the suicide letter that would have implicated him, potentially. I feel like the motive is, like, checked off. There could be more to it, but I feel like that's, like, 90% there. <laughs> It, I, I wish the game would not give me these hints. I'm telling you, chat, I have watched too many mysteries. You can't do this. I will pick up very fast if you hit me things like this. It's too much. It's too much. So... It is interesting that he went to the room, though, potentially. Which is why I think maybe Matt on guard wasn't... Like, he needed to receive the item... Which, if I had to guess, given the number of teddy bears were there, it was probably given to him in a teddy bear so that nobody would see him receive the letter. I don't know if the letter would have originally been in a teddy bear or not, but it would have been in an excuse because they would have just seen the bear moving around. So I feel like, again, that's like 90% there. there. I feel like we're missing like one small thing, but I feel like we have a through line for the motive and we already know who the killer is, and we know how he did it, more or less. Let me take a look at the photo one more time, too. Hmm. So, what, what possible twists could we be seeing? Let me think. So, the game purposely didn't show us the autopsy report. So that makes me think the game is going to try to trick us to focus on the knife. And the knife is not the murder weapon. Maybe he was strangled? I don't see what else would have been the kill thing in this image, potentially. I don't think he was killed by a bear. They could have used the guitar on him, technically. So I'm like a little torn between if he got strangled to death or if the guitar was involved more directly in the murder and like the guitar string was used to kill him. Because if he was strangled, you wouldn't see it because he had his scarf on. So you wouldn't see it as the player looking at this photo. So that's, that's where my mind is going, chat. I feel like the game is going to try to throw me off and be like, Oh, how could you possibly explain that the murder weapon used to kill blah blah blah? Well, and the easiest answer is it didn't kill him, so... I don't know why he had the knife. Maybe he got it from his meeting with the other person? Maybe that was an oversight on his part? Because he's bad? That's a little unclear to me why that specific knife had to be used. But I guess we'll find out, chat. So that that's where I am with my thought process before we've even touched the trial, by the way. I want to see how close I am. Well, if you ever feel the need for my assistance, it is available to you. I'm not in charge of this case, so I could be a bit more generous with information. Oh, I can ask you some questions? Just what is going on inside his head? Hmm. Group of Von Karma Blood. A lot of things may have happened. However, Manfred von Karma was still my mentor. The only- okay. So... Missing piece. Missing piece that needs to get addressed for that to be 100% solved. In my explanation, I did not involve the secretary. The secretary is clearly involved. I can't tell if she really has opinion or feelings towards Juan Carta yet. I wonder if she's helping him. Or she's playing a double agent. Because <sighs> that would have been how... Okay, so that would have been how... That would have been how the man on guard would have learned about the suicide note ahead of the conference. Because she would have been seeing the other guy in private, which we learned from this newspaper clipping. Yes. Okay, so that checks out. 
<laughs> chat, chat, murder solved. <laughs> murder solved. I'm telling you, chat, if I was in this game, the, the cases would last like an hour. That tops. <laughs> like, I'm like, stop wasting my time. <laughs> I don't need any more evidence. Nice try, plot twist. A lot of things may have happened. However, Manfred von Karma was still my mentor. The perfect win record is a proof of a von Karma. One year ago, you could not establish guilt in a few cases. Are those losses the reason you suddenly disappeared from the prosecutor's office? Did you leave because you had lost your perfect win record? To think your motivation for prosecuting trials was so selfish. It had been better for everyone if you never came back from the dead, Edgeworth. Wow, Phoenix... Phoenix got really angry between games. I see. Let me ask you something. Why do you stand in the courtroom? What is your reason? Why stand in court? I don't know why we're in court. Phoenix, enlighten me. Well, with Francisca, she almost always says, I will defeat you this time, the instant she sees me. But the courtroom is not a personal battlefield for prosecutors and lawyers. Yeah, no duh. <laughs> right, Chad? Congratulations, you found out how justice is supposed to work. I stand in the courtroom to defend my client. To save their lives. To save your client, you say. Those who think only of their own ego-driven goals. Those kinds of prosecutors are reprehensible to me. Even if you're a prodigy, or someone like you, Edgeworth. Looks like there's still a lot you have yet to learn. A lot I've yet to learn? Me? Hmm. Well, that's enough for now. The time when you will see is coming soon enough. That's it? Uh... Do I need to present him... Celeste? To get more information about Celeste? I swear, Chad, if I, I would just like to say, if I present this and he goes, oh, the, the weird thing is we can't find her suicide note, I'm going to be like, oh, score. I'm just letting you know, Chad, the pop off is going to be real. If he, if he mentions a suicide note at all, especially if it's missing, it's over, Chad. The case is over. Pack your bags. Stop wasting our time, Phoenix Wright. Hmm. This woman is another key to solving this case. Do you really think so? She was Adrian Andrews' mentor a long time ago. But she suddenly called... Oh, she was suddenly called away by a different show and became Juan Carita's manager. And then, a few months later, Celeste Impacts died. But her death was ruled a suicide, right? Yes. Hmm. But there's still one riddle we've yet to solve. Oh, actually, you know what? You know what, chat? No, no, no. You know what? No, 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 no. No, no, no. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We're we're going full circle, chat. The 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 the, the deduction train is still it's still not at its station. This is the plot twist. So she wants to get revenge potentially on both of these men. That's why Adrian Andrews has four locks, and she was the one that basically made sure the knife ended up in the other person's body because she wants to frame Matt on guard and that finally links in what was said earlier that someone smart was behind it all. So she is trying to make sure Matt on guard goes to jail and she gets revenge for her dead mentor. Done. <laughs> Done, Chad. I'm slamming the pen. It is over. I don't think it can plot twist me now. Immune. Nice try, though. Are you gonna ask where the are you gonna ask me where the suicide note is? I dare you. I dare you. A riddle. Her suicide note. Oh, got it! <laughs> Done. <laughs> See now, chat, the rest of this case is gonna be me going, figure it out, you morons! <laughs> like, man, it's gonna be so painful doing this trial. I'm like, oh, I already know, I like, come on, that's like, that's like 99% there. It has to be at this point. I've solved the mystery of the locks. 
Like, I don't super care about where some of the witnesses are. I think I got everything in fine detail good enough. I don't care about old bags, testimony, or whatever. It's not relevant to the order of events, to be honest. I don't need her testimony to solve this. Tell her to get out of here. Tell her to skip trial. Not needed. It went missing. No one could find it. Yup. Yup, 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 chat. And that's why the other person d claimed to not know about it. Mm-hmm. Suicide note that just vanished, huh? Let's ask about the suicide note. Miss Impact's death was most certainly a suicide. Of that, there is no mistake. However, we could not find her suicide note. That's when the police began to suspect that someone had hidden it. Mm-hmm. The suicide note. How do you know Miss Impacts had ever written such a note? There was no solid evidence, however. I did find traces of ink on her right index finger, which makes the likelihood of a suicide note very high. But who would hide such a thing? Please think it was Mr. Juan Carrita himself. The victim? Like how you can see like a little will behind the dialogue box. He was the one who found her body. Which makes him the only person who had a chance to hide her suicide note. Mr. Curdy hid his own manager's suicide note. But why? As long as her note is missing, any speculation beyond this is meaningless. For now, I think you should look this over. This is the suicide report. Part one, anyway. Part one? Suicide report to see Celeste Impacts found by Juan Carrita. What's her suicide note hidden? Um... Do I need to do anything else? Hmm... Or do I just present the evidence again? Let's try presenting the evidence again. I don't like to look through reports. I like suicide reports even less. Worst of all are the reports that have multiple parts like that one. That is two. Two parts? Hmm. What you just handed me is the first part of the report. Here is the second part. Well, why didn't you just give me both parts if you had them, you jerk? <laughs> <laughs> right, chat? That felt like a really unnecessary presenting of evidence to advance the plot. I'm just saying, chat. I just don't feel like that was needed. Now, we like to call that padding. It's not like he comes back a day later, like, oh, I haven't found it yet or whatever. Jerk. The second part of the report is about an attempted suicide. Attempter's name? It's Adrian Andrews. Dun dun dun. Miss Andrews, um, what did she do? Hmm. She, she tried to kill herself. Doesn't seem like the kind of person to try to kill herself, though. You think she's a strong career woman? That's just what she wants you to think. Adrian Andrews, she always has a certain secret she's always trying to hide. A secret? Her dependent nature. That's what she's really like on the inside. Interesting. Miss Andrews, dependent. Talk about the exact opposite of what that woman is. Okay. Do we need to do anything else? I mean, I'll present one time her image to see if anything happens. Uh, here she is. Adrian Andrews. She holds a large secret within her. A secret? You can't help but feel that this whole case revolves around her. Hmm. 
Hmm. Oh, you know what it is. Actually, take that, take that back. I think, old bag, you know what it is? <laughs> Hold on, chat. I'm, the more I think about it, the more I'm figuring out this case. So I think if we're going to mirror exactly what was done in the first case, the security lady saw somebody in the Steel Samurai costume crawling away. Are they going to reuse that from the first game where she saw the Nickel Samurai walk out of the room, but it's really Adrian Andrews in disguise? And that's where she stabbed him, quote unquote, or found his dead body already and then stabbed him. Hmm. Because that, that would be the double implication, because she doesn't care if she gets seen in the costume. In fact, she wants to. So I, I think this is starting to lock up pretty tight at this point, chat. I'm not sure what else it could really do to surprise me at this point. So I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to amend my earlier statement that he was collecting something from him. I mean, he still probably did. He probably did ask for the suicide note because he learned about the plans, most likely. And that's why the, the murder was committed. And then it was meant to implicate him because it was the big mastermind play. Hmm. Oh, I didn't realize there was a new topic up here. Good thing. I was about to walk away because I was like, nothing really happened and I didn't get anything new. Here we are. Was this about Miss Andrews having a dependent nature? Adrian Andrews attempted suicide. It was a few days after the death of Celeste impacts. And? and? Why did Adrian Andrews think about committing suicide? Because she had apparently lost her will to live. Lost her will? But why would she... Her pillar of strength, her mentor Celeste impacts, was gone forever. That's why. Why would that... Is that what they call following someone to the grave? Hmm. After her attempted suicide, Adrian Andrews started attending counseling sessions. She's someone who needs a person in whom she could trust absolutely. And once she finds that person, she'll do anything she can to keep them near. That's such an anchor in her life. Crippling anxiety stifles her ability to live. And that's... That's the nature of her dependency on others? And Celeste Impact suddenly committed suicide. The world before it turned pitch black. That's according to... Adrian Andrews herself. Then... That means her super confident attitude. It's all... A facade. Ooh, I like the little squiggle under the sea. What do you call it? Does anybody know what that when it's called when they have the squiggle like that? I'd love to know, chat. Add that to my own vocabulary. I've seen it before, but I don't know what that's called. She's only copying her mentor's behavior to hold herself together. How terrible. Tempted suicide report. Tempter, Adrian Andrews, reason, shock from Celeste Impact suicide has been added to the court record. Okay, do we need anything else? With all this information, is this enough evidence to talk to Andrews? We have the suicide report, the clipping, we got some profile images. That might be enough evidence? Let's, let's go back to her and see if we can solve with what we have here. I don't know what the game wants me to do. I, I know what the plot of the case is. I, I've worked it out. I feel extremely confident because it covers most of what is being done. So I'm like, technically, Matt on guard isn't guilty of the crime, but he's guilty of another crime. I don't know how they're going to handle that, per se. I guess we'll find out, chat. I guess we'll find out. Uh, let's go here. Oh, is she not here anymore? On guard's hotel room. Oh, Miss Andrews is here. It looks like she's talking with someone. That's Francisca Von Karma. Miss Von Karma? What are you doing here? Uh, well, you see, I'm his lawyer, so... You've got some nerve following me around. Following you? 
It's you, Miss Von Karma. You're the one doing the following. Pearls. Who is following after that Mr. Detective with the little beard? Me? Following after Scruffy? Don't make me laugh. Let me show you something interesting, little girl. Beep beeps chat. What is that? An electromagnetic receiver. I planted a tracking device on that detective. And with this, I know that fools every move. Totally legal. <laughs> Legality. <laughs> so that was the noise we heard. Oh, so the noise we heard was this receiver. I feel really sorry for poor Detective Gumshoe now. Take that, right? <laughs> now then. Let's stop wasting time. Oh, oh, Von Karma, every time we talk to most people, it's a waste of time. Nothing has changed. Adrian Andrews. Yes? Think hard about what we just discussed. Understood? All right. Oh, is it going to be something stupid? Like, that's the killer's calling card. And this is going to be the big reveal that she knows about the killer. Oh, God, is his name like Shelly or something? Or Sheldon? Sheldon to killer? Swear chat. Because, <laughs> I mean, like, the killer is not the full. It can't be the full name. It sounds like a middle, middle name and a last name. Oh. It's gonna be so stupid. I'm sure somebody out there was impressed when they realized she's involved. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe they were impressed? I don't know. I mean, for me, I, I'm pretty sure I know what's happening here. I, I don't think I got to this point. I got me... No, 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 that's not true. I think I got literally to the beginning of the trial of, of upcoming portion, and I gave up. <laughs> I, I, I did not get to the second day or investigation or final trial. I was just like, I'm so fed up. <laughs> just like... That's fine. Miss Andrews, she seems a little dazed, doesn't she? Motive for murder. Why are you asking me? Don't tell me you can see inside my heart. No, but you see the locks you have on your psyche. Do I have enough to present here? Let's find out. Why was Juan Carita murdered? If you ask me, I think you know the reason he was killed. Hmm. Why are you hiding things? Didn't you realize you're putting Mr. Ungard's life in danger by your actions? Why do you ask questions for which I have no answers? The truth is, I was not that close to Mr. Corrida. Yeah, I don't believe this. You were not that close. That's right. Never been good at being intimate with another person. Not good at being intimate with another person. Somehow I do highly doubt that. Let's present the newspaper clipping. I keep calling it newspaper. It's more magazine. You and Mr. Corrida had an intimate relationship, did you not? A silly third-rate tabloid article. If you ever had half your whips about you, you wouldn't believe such rubbish. Well, seems quite a few people have already bought into the story. Hmm. As to be expected in a world filled with crooks and liars. Note to self, stay on our good side. In any case, I despise interpersonal relationships like that. I see. However, what if there is a need for you to get close to someone? Me? I need to get close to Mr. Corrida. As if there was ever such a need. Didn't you get close to Mr. Krita for this person's sake? Let's present Celeste Impax. Take that. Take that. Celeste Impax, your mentor. How do you know about Celeste? Okay, we finally made progress. Wow, it took two pieces of evidence to take down a single lock. That's kind of crazy. Miss Impax, she committed suicide, didn't she? But it looks like no one knows why. Oh, she's looking nervous. Right before her death, she was one Corita's manager. So I believe you got close to Mr. Corita, so you could find out more about her suicide. You have a great imagination. 
You may have a future yet as a slimy muckraker for a putrid third-rate tabloid. Oh no, chat. She's gonna be talking about duelists any second now, chat. Miss Andrews? There was no mystery surrounding her death. None. Hmm. <laughs> Kaiba, is that you? Pretty much. She's gonna tell she's gonna tell us off for being a third rate writer with a fourth rate uh <laughs> story or something. It would be pointless for me to force myself into a relationship for nothing. Is that really true? It's really no mystery at all. I don't believe you were completely at ease with the way your suicide was resolved. Is there... Do we literally have missing suicide? Let's try presenting it. Miss Impact's suicide note was never found, was it? Looks like the police were under the suspicion that someone had hidden it. Like maybe the person who discovered her body, Mr. Karita. Juan? And Miss Andrews, I believe you thought the same thing. That is why you became intimate with Mr. Karita. Okay, we're making progress. I've sat by quietly and listened to your insulting ramblings long enough. It's true that Celeste was my mentor. However, allow me to say this again. It had nothing to do with me. I didn't even know that her suicide note was never found. A person who doesn't care about what goes on in the lives of others. It's the impression you like to give, however. I don't think that's who you really are. What? I have evidence that says otherwise. This is proof that Celeste Impacts was someone very important to you. Let's present the attempted suicide report here. Miss Andrews, you nearly went through with it too, didn't you? Went through with what? Ending your life. Miss Andrews, you look and act like a very strong woman who has it all together. Don't ask for anyone's help, relying only on yourself. Yes. I've been very independent ever since I can remember. However, that is all just a lie. A facade. You always searched out people on whom you could depend on. That's... You were dependent on Miss Impacts, weren't you? Which is why, when she passed away, you lost everything you had. Stop! When Celeste passed away so suddenly like that. I died a death of my own, but no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't stop thinking about what had become of her note. Must have heard about the police report. The one that said the police suspected Mr. Cardi of hiding Miss Impax's note. Heard about it, and thought to recover it from him getting close, am I right? If that's the case, then everything changes. What do you mean? What topic did we start the conversation on again? It was, why was the victim killed? Exactly. Somehow, Miss Andrews, it seems that you have become the one with a reason to want Mr. Carrida dead. M me Miss Impax was everything to you. And then she died. You'd do anything to find out why she killed herself. Even commit murder. Murder? Oh. We didn't have to present anything on that last one. Nice. Motive for murder. It's true. I'm a woman who can only live in insecurity. I'm physically small, and I don't really have a lot of self-confidence. I pushed against all that, though. I've tried to live strongly. I never wanted anyone to find out the truth. Miss Andrews! This one thing. It's the one thing I wanted to take with me to the grave. It was my secret. Mine and mine alone. I... I'm sorry. You probably think I'm a worthless human being right now, don't you? Please, Miss Andrews, all I want to know is the truth. After Celeste passed away, I heard that someone had hidden her suicide note. And that someone was Juan Corrida. 
Celeste, without her. Without her, I became scared. Everything, everyone seemed like they were out to get me. So you got close to Mr. Karada to recover a suicide note, right? Looks like that tabloid reported the truth after all. Ironic, isn't it? Well, like they say, where there's smoke, there's fire. They purposely add fuel to the fire. They keep the celebrity world burning. But, as for the suicide note, I didn't and wouldn't kill anyone for it. It just doesn't suit me, that's all. Well, that's enough for now. I still have work to do, so... I understand. Oh, one small favor to ask. My... attempted suicide like for you to keep it a secret. Miss Andrews? If people found out about my weakness, I... I would sooner choose to die than live. All right, I understand. We'll keep it a secret. Miss Andrews. She's over... I guess she's the overthinking type. She probably never says anything without carefully thinking it through first. Thank you for your discretion. Mr. Nick, can I ask you something? What is it? Sandra's been playing with that card in her hand since a little while back. Well, she's been playing with it every cutscene she's been in. That card? Yeah, I guess she has. Miss Andrews, what is that card you're holding? Huh? Oh, this? I don't quite know. It just suddenly appeared in my handbag. What is it? It looks like a seashell? That's what it looks like, doesn't it? Honestly, don't remember owning this card. Wonder where I picked it up from. Yeah. Her not remembering something clearly? Sounds like it would be a rare occurrence. Well, I must be off. I leave Mr. Ungard in your capable hands. Is, is there anything else we have to do? I thought the chapter would just kind of end there. Do I have to go back to the... Okay, I just have to leave. I was like, I'm pretty sure I solved all the locks. I don't know what it wants for me. Well, I think we gather about all we can. What about Mystic Maya? Is she alright? Oh, Pearls. She looks like she's all worn out by this. She hasn't slept at all, and she's been walking all over the place with me today. What's wrong, Mr. Nick? Let's go back to the office for a little while. You're really tired, right? Oh, no. I'm okay, really. I'm fine, I really am. You don't look fine to me. All right, let's go back to the office. Where either we're gonna get a call, we're gonna see from Maya. Hopefully we don't get a visitation from Mia. I really don't want one of those. Oops, wrong way. <laughs> All right, chat, I'm to like just, it's fine. I, I don't need the game to handhold me. I'm pretty sure I know. Get away from these freaks. Let's go here. Okay, we're back in the office. March 21st, right in company law offices. So, what now? Well, I did find one thing out for sure. Sandrews has a motive. I mean, Miss Impact's a suicide note. That's right. She's also the one to discover the victim's body. Clever. Beep, 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 chat. <clears throat> oh, Mr. Nick, the transceiver. Hello? Right in company law offices. Mr. Attorney, you're not answering a phone. Maya! Oh, where's Maya? As I promised, I have not gone within a few feet of her this whole time. You! Which is why, I suppose, she's absolutely famished. What? So I suggest you win a quick acquittal, my friend. At any cost. Wouldn't you agree? Wait, Maya, let me hear her. Very well. Ask my... Maya, is that you? Sis, ask my sis. Oh, I'm disappointed. I'm not surprised. I'm just disappointed. <laughs> Beep. Maya, Maya. Damn it, he cut me off. 
it, is she gonna walk around as Mia and then Mia can report back her findings to Phoenix? Is that what's happening? <laughs> I don't remember this part at all. Missing Maya said, ask my sis, didn't she? Sis? What does she mean by that? Phoenix, what do you think she means by that? How how has every case been solved? Of course she's asking about Mia, right, <laughs> Chad? See cases, all of them. <laughs> right? Right, Chad? Like li literally all but one. All but one case, I'm pretty sure. Two cases. There were two cases between two games that were not solved with Mia. And even then, technicality. Technicality because she was alive in the first case in the game, even though she wasn't a spirit. So you know what? I take that back. Only one case. <laughs> Just one case. The final case of uh the the first game. Come on, Phoenix. Ugh. You're a hopeless one. I'm um, sorry. Ah! Oh, jeez. Mia! I have a message from Maya. So come, ask me anything you want about her. I, I don't care. <laughs> I'll be like, sucks to be you, bye! I'll ask you about Maya's situation. How's Maya? She's safe, for now. The kidnapper is one to keep his word, it seems. I'm glad to hear she's safe. But Mia... How did you know? As soon as she was locked up, Maya called for me. I read the notes she left, and I gathered as much information about her surroundings as I could. I didn't know you could use spirit channeling like that. Pretty smart of her. The kidnapper. Mia is never resting in peace, chat. I just want you to know, <laughs> she's coming back constantly. At this point, death is basically just a revolving door for her. <laughs> They're like, oh, it's Mia again. Let me guess. Phoenix case again. <laughs> like, <laughs> Just wee. <laughs> so I ask you about the kidnapper. The kidnapper. What's he like? I don't know. Apparently, Maya went to answer a phone call at the hotel. It was drugged there. And... She didn't see the face of her attacker. Ugh. Maya's locked up in a very dark place right now. I'll tell you everything I heard when I was with her. When you were with her? Date unknown, time unknown, location unknown. Oh, I already see the card that we have to go investigate. Uh, I'm starving. You really go for some apple pie. I mean, at a time like this, sweets are the only way to go. I have to say positive. He promised he wasn't going to kill me. I'm not going to die. Sis, wonder if you're with Nick right now. What's this? It feels like there's a lot of glass bottles here. And these, they feel like barrels. I'll pass. Too bad I'm really hungry and not really thirsty. I'm in a really dark place right now. That's evidenced by the giant beam of light that's over the door facing me, so everything is illuminated perfectly for this scene. There are all sorts of things piled up here, but it's too dark to see. Is it? Is it too dark to see? Is it? Is it though? Is it though? Is it though? Let's look at the letter, or excuse me, the calling card. Huh? Someone dropped a card here. Kind of looks like a business card. There's no name on it. <laughs> Maya, I think you might be going blind. I think so. I just like, I can clearly see the entire room. I'm just saying. Hmm, it's a picture of a seashell, I think. What a strange card. Brad, it's locked. Hmm. The store lock seems easy enough to open. On TV, the hero always uses a plastic card or a sift piece of cardboard. Then click, they magically open the door. I wonder if there's a card like that around here I could use. What do you mean I wonder if there's a card around here? Maya, how, did you, did you receive some brain damage? <laughs> it's like, did, did that conversation just flow the way we just heard it out loud? Oh, there's a card here. I wonder what this is for. I wonder if there's a card like this around here. Like, throw your hands in the air, chat. Oh, that's it. The shell card. Yes, yes, Maya, you're killing me. 
If I use this, maybe I could get the door open. This might be my key out of here. I had a feeling this card might be useful. I'm such a genius. Uh, don't quit your day job, Maya. All right. Now if you'll excuse me, Mr. Kidnapper. Click. I did it. Okay. Now I'm getting the heck out of here. I shouldn't keep Nick waiting or worried. To be continued. Wow, that is the world's easiest escape. Did he not even tie her up? Okay. That seems like a really huge oversight for him. Chad, unfortunately, I think we're going to have to pause here for now. So let's chat about how we feel the sessions went so far. So aside from some early issues with uh, technicalities and stuff like that, or technical issues more specifically, I think we have this case locked down, but I, I have to be in a good mood for the trial. <laughs> so we're, we're going to take a little break. We're going to come to it, I think, next week. Go in with a fresh non-comedy character overwhelming amount of uh, dialogue from earlier into it and go fresh into the trial and i think from there maybe there'll be some small details i might have missed but i i think i know where this trial is going start to finish so not expecting to be surprised too too much there so anyway chat let's pause for now and uh with that we're going to say goodbye to youtube so if you did watch to this point the video of the bot i'd just like to say thank you for watching hope to see you again next time